Seven minutes after the hour of 8 a.m. Mountain Time, it's Saturday. It's July 1st, 2023. Tommy Galop, your morning mayor in the house. Shane Madobin, Kamloops, Canada, half man, half amazing. And uh, last week, Shane, we had all kinds of issues with the phones and the Internet and everything else. And uh, we, we discovered the cause. That's right. There was a derailment in Columbus. And oh, that wow. that uh, derailment cut a major internet trunk line <laughs> coming into the state. <laughs> so, no kidding. So yes, that's okay. why we, uh, uh, for whatever reason, uh, you know, it is KMMS. Uh, I don't know why we have the phones tied to the internet, but if the internet doesn't work, the phones don't work. So uh, we have phones this morning. I tested the phones out. You can call us. 406-522-TALK is the number. 406-522-8255. And we'll be happy to take your calls. You can also text us at our great text line. 406-478-8298. And you'll want to do that. And gas going up a nickel, Shane. What the hell? Well, there you go. Well, got a one-minute learning moment. Morning for everyone listening. Happy Canada Day! It's Canada Day. Happy Canada, Canada Day. Yes. <laughs> the, we became the, the the Dominion of Canada, uh, July first, eighteen sixty seven. Wow, that's you know, and, um, I mean, on oh, ninety years after you, um, with the passing of the British North American Act in eighteen sixty seven. Um, by the British Parliament, when uh, at the time there were three separate colonies in Canada, United Canada, that was Upper and Lower Canada, Quebec and Ontario, Nova Scotia and Brunswick. And they were united into a single dominion, still within the British Empire, but uh, as a confederation. And then the second thing that's important about today is the Canadian Act of 1982. And that's when Can the Canadian Constitution was patriated uh, back to Canada uh, from the United Kingdom, um, and uh, which severed the vestiges of legal dependence on the Parliament of the United Kingdom. So it, it's a big day for us as Fourth of July on Tuesday when we have our podcast. Yeah. But, uh, so everybody, happy Canada Day. Go out and have a mm -hmm. beer for Canada because we're your best partners and buddies in the world. That's amen to that. Well, <laughs> I don't know if I can pronounce this, Shane. <laughs> uh, the world is celebrated, celebrating a world bronchitis, uh, bron uh, it's bronchitis uh, day. Bron bron oh, dinosaur day. Bronchitis. No, it's, uh, I guess it's sort of like bronchitis, but it's not, it's not bronchitis. So. Uh, they call it dinosaur day. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's, I, it's world dinosaur day. But the, the thing is, it's a world day. <laughs> it's something I never heard of, and it's a world day. So anyway. But it well, is. Bronchitis, by the way, is one of those 117 variants of the cold. Okay. And, you know, it, it can be caused by asthma. Yeah. It can be caused by uh, <laughs> um, allergies <laughs> and <laughs> uh, and a whole bunch of other things. But uh, there, 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 there's the context. Of okay, that. there we go. <laughs> well, it's also Canada Day, as Shane mentioned. It's also International Joke Day. So uh, maybe the callers, 522-TALK, you can give us your favorite uh, clean joke, please. Clean, <laughs> clean right. joke right. on okay. the air because, you know, sure. we, we do have a license to protect here. Uh, it's also the Battle of Get Gettysburg Day, Shane, and it's National Postal Worker Day. So if you're going postal, <laughs> there you are. It's National, That's right. It's National Postal Worker Day. It's yeah, also, yeah, it's also the, right. what? Go ahead. I just saying, go uh, ahead. It's also International Day of Cooperatives. So oh. if you're in a cooperative, cooperate. Yes. You know, I, 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 on one of the road trips I've taken many across North America, uh, when I went through Pennsylvania on one road trip, I purposely stayed, in, and I got up at uh, 4 in the morning to go out on the field of Gettysburg, and it, it happened to be on the 2nd of, of July. And uh, I sat there and watched the mist come in and go off the, the uh, you know, the, the green uh, and... Uh, 
trying to imagine what it had to have been like the little round top hmm. that you know the the high ground the one the first you know rule of military strategy you know capture the high ground and uh, that's what happened is the uh, the north captured the little round that's top what, the high ground and yep. won the, won won the battle rules of engagement huh rules of engagement <laughs> baby all right, let's take a chance, Shay, and see if the phones are actually working. Four zero six five two two talk is the number. Call your own with the award-winning Tom and Shane. What's up? Hey, good morning, Gloria, Mary, Ken, hey. and Happy Canada Day to you, Shane. That sounds really Thank you, exciting. Darling. Thank you for the history lesson. Uh, I just want to say that we have a lot to celebrate as Americans. Uh, equality. We actually have equality back in our lives. The affirmative yeah. action's been. Uh, discontinued, kicked out on its butt. Uh, no student loan uh, forgiveness. That's another exciting thing. And uh, no uh, religious uh, discrimination in the workplace. I guess that's actually been on the rise in our nation. I was uh, unaware of that. But other than that, uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, the GOP and, uh, uh, is making strides towards uh, freedom and equality in our country, and, and that's wonderful. And uh, Roundup, uh, they say that Missoula has um, a fireworks uh, restriction and a, a snitch line. That's unbelievable. And uh, I was reading uh, some people today, residents of uh, Missoula, and they're going to really be blowing them off. Uh, and I don't blame them. That's ridiculous. And uh, Roundup, uh, we have our right extravaganza going on. We're going to have our uh, parade and our rodeo uh, Tuesday. And lots of um, uh, flea market and garage sales, and our museum is open. And don't forget to stop by and visit our Teddy Blue Cowboy uh, sculpture here in the middle of town, right on the uh, the uh, courthouse green. So other than that, everybody have a wonderful weekend, and uh, just just enjoy yourself. As Americans, we've been through a lot, and just just party, 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 and and just have a good time. And God bless all of you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Nancy. All right. Appreciate it, Nancy, for rounding up. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, well, you know, it's uh, Fourth of July is one of my one of my holidays. Uh, the animals don't like the fireworks very much, but, uh, you know, I tolerate it because it's only it's only uh, well, they've already started started shooting them off last night. And of course, the fireworks stands everywhere are open. So uh, so I'm figuring we got at least a week of um uh, of fireworks, and uh, I think I've got a week of trazodone for the dogs uh, <laughs> to kind of calm them down a little bit. So hopefully uh, we'll have a happy fourth. And by the way, if you want to have a happy fourth, pick up a fifth on the third. That will make your fourth very happy. You know, it's an old joke that we use every year. So. Well, my, my, my observation is, is the, the, you know, Canada Day and, and Fourth of July conveniently being so close, we celebrate it similar mm -hmm. in a similar way, mm -hmm. and uh, that celebration has has always been music and parades and and marching bands and mm -hmm. and uh, cheerleaders and bagpipe but in and, and then the fireworks and a picnic or a picnic mm -hmm. or in, and a barbecue and fireworks and mm -hmm. and it's always been a special day, but. If you look around the world, particularly communists and, and uh, Marxist mm -hmm. regimes throughout the last 50 years, 70 years, uh -huh. uh, the, uh, their celebration day has always been military, you know, military parades. Mm -hmm. the people didn't go out and have a barbecue. People didn't go out and, and <laughs> have a picnic. You know, they all had to stand <laughs> in a square somewhere and, and yeah. watch, a, you know, this massive military go by. So... It, that, that tells you a big difference between freedom and and uh, uh, mm -hmm. people that are under the tyranny of, of a small group of men. That it does. Let's take a phone call, 406-522-8255. Caller, you're on with Tom and Shay. What's up? Uh, to, uh, I just want to say today is actually a dark day in Montana history because uh, starting today, the state of Montana requires a $10 per year uh, ID card or a permission card to access the uh, fishing accesses and, you know, the, the, the it's shame on the Montana Republican legislature for passing that. So wow. starting today, just to go swimming in the river in Montana, you need to have a $10 per year government pass permission slip 
to go and jump in the river or, or have a, an inner tube in the water. And, of course, it's all designed. These Republicans go and say it's to, to soak the out-of-staters. Well, I, I'm a fourth-generation Montanan. This is a dark day in Montana history. There's no other state, as far as I know, that requires a government uh, annual permit to go to the beach, to go to access the river, to dip your toes mm -hmm. in the water. I don't know of any other state that requires this. This is a shame. Shame on the governor. Shame on the Montana Republicans. Well, all right. Well, I agree. Uh, you know, I, I, I think it's ridiculous we have to have a fishing license in Montana. But that's just me. You know. <laughs> but, well, and, well and here in B.C., because we have fresh water and salt water, $65 mm -hmm. for a, a resident for a fishing license. Then you have to buy a stamp. A freshwater stamp is uh, 15 mm -hmm. and to fish for salmon in the ocean is another $65. Mm -hmm. But people that come in out of state, tourists, as you say, yeah. uh, $150 plus the stamps because wow. they come into salmon fish, right? So, yeah. <laughs> government, government, make yeah. your money. Get your money out. The government's waiting. Hey, thanks That's for the right. call. Hey, appreciate the information. Thank thanks so much. All right. Take care. 406522 talk is the number. 406522-8255. Caller, you're on with the award-winning Tom and Shane. What's up? Good morning, gentlemen. This is Jerry calling it's from great. Soggy Big Timber. Well, grateful, <laughs> fellas. Just grateful. Um, Tom, I caught your um, uh, a, a, um, session with uh, Aaron over at the Grand Tree. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And um, he mentioned something Um it, it's got me a bit worried. Uh, you know, on Father's Day, if you can remember, uh, I was allowed to adopt you as a son because I have no children. Right. Yeah. And so what's up with you growing your hair long? What do you got, ripped mm -hmm. jeans and a tie-dye shirt now? You yeah. turning hippie on me? <laughs> That's it. That's me. <laughs> got my long uh, hair. I've got my uh, bell bottoms. Uh, you know, I'm ready to I'm, – yeah, I'm rocking, man. And, I'm and, a, I'm... and Jerry, a moustache. <laughs> 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 So what do you do, Shane? Because I mean, I, as big as Tom is, when you when I see him on Skype, I mean, it, it, his his mustache it looks like a moose stash. You know how big <laughs> they are on a moose. You know, it's Shane. You, you you send them to school, you buy them the books, and they eat the pages. <laughs> I'm it. telling you, these kids. <laughs> That's right. That's right, buddy. Yeah, you got it. I just want I just want to expound on that uh, last caller. Um, it's. A conservation um, stamp. You know, when you buy a fishing license, there's a conservation uh, a fee um, that attached to your fishing license or your hunting license. Mm -hmm. So if you have a fishing license or a hunting license, you automatically um, have the have the, uh, uh, the cost of the conservation um, aspect of it incorporated into that license. But if you don't have a fishing or hunting license, then you have mm -hmm. to go get this, pay this conservation fee. And that gentleman is absolutely right. It's ludicrous. And Aaron Flint made a point um, and was expanding on this uh, uh, thing. And it says it's for um, uh, schools to go to the schools and for the state funded institutions. And I'm saying to myself, now, hang on. Property taxes fund the schools like the mm -hmm. elementary, middle schools and high schools. And what the heck do the colleges need more money for? Yeah. Is beyond me. <laughs> I <laughs> hear really. you. <laughs> Loud and clear. <laughs> I, 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 come on, these these colleges that even in this state, they're, they're, it's such a woke agenda. They're you know they're being taught, and and tuition isn't high enough. What the heck do they need that money for? So I, I agree with this gentleman. This this has got to be um, uh, rejected or mm -hmm. definitely done away with. It's a, it's a, another tax on here. They give you a, a property tax rebate or whatever. Then they turn around and going to take more money from you. It, it's I don't get it. Uh, yeah. I, well, yes, I do. I, I actually do. Of course you get it. And, yeah. And, and, hey, hey, guys, did you notice how much protest there was by the administration because of these Supreme Court decisions? Do you ever notice that? Oh, yeah. Well, it, it, was, seem to, yeah, it was kind of to be expected, I believe. Yeah, the, the, the Supreme Court's wrong. All of a sudden, they're wrong. Yeah. But when the Supreme Court rules in their favor, oh, boy, they just love the heck out of that. You know what I mean? They did the right thing. Let freedom let the, uh, ring. Yeah. <laughs> let the, like the decision on the um, on the legislatures being overruled by courts when it comes to uh, the legislatures um, 
in redistricting or, or, you know, the way they are going to set up their uh, uh, districts for voting. Yeah. That the, the court overruled that. And, and here's the legislatures that, that are elected by the people. No, you can't do that. The courts will have the final say. And this yeah. is what happened in the last election. But that we don't want to get into that. Well, the judge threw our Constitution out of the bus. We're supposed to have in-person voting for national elections, and we didn't in 2020. Right. You know, so, I mean, yeah, the Constitutions don't mean anything. Laws don't mean anything to these people. So, mm. you know, it's just whatever. It's like the 60s. If it feels good, do it. Uh, you know, so yep. Bang, go for it. You know, I have a comment to make about a gentleman uh, since the phones were down last week. A gentleman texted in, and I use that term gentleman uh, loosely because you don't know who it is, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, he, he was praising this fellow, Jack Smith, as being a you know competent uh, prosecutor and, you know, really uh, right on type of guy. And I'm saying to myself, obviously, this texter did not do his homework. Everything that Jack Smith has brought uh, against, you know, charges against somebody— He's been totally overruled. The Supreme Court blasted him eight to nothing on one decision, and I guess it was eight to nothing probably because one of the judges had uh, retired or passed away. But it was against a suit against a a former – I think it was a governor back east, and I forgot the state, and I think his name was McDonald. Mm. And and, and, and this guy, Jack Smith, is – he's a hack, and he's a cutthroat kind of guy. And if that person would have done the research – they would realize that this feller is just doing this as a vendetta and at the behest of uh, you-know-who. Well, he's guy. an ex-Obama uh, guy, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and here's another thing. If these people have leaked all this information regarding supposedly classified documents, <laughs> there's these leaks that are coming out. Do you ever wonder why that happens, Tom and Shane? Who's doing that? Well, it's election uh-huh. year. Well, well, yeah, but if it's classified, these people should be, if they're leaking it, they should be arrested under the espionage. Well, yeah. They're leaking classified yeah. documents. Yeah. <laughs> that, that doesn't, I, I, I'm telling you, things are a little upside down, guys. They really are. <laughs> and now that Tom's turning into a hippie, I don't know what to do. Yeah, I, I really don't. Boy, listen, I'm, yeah, I'm going through my second <laughs> childhood. <laughs> this is going to be. All right, gentlemen. Hey, Tom, try not to set off too many fireworks. And by the way, there was a caller to Aaron's program from Bozeman who was complaining about this whole thing that this mayor in Bozeman uh, put forth about no fireworks. Oh, he yeah. actually called the police department and that the police aren't going to turn around and arrest you if you're no, popping off a few firecrackers. So. No. Uh, by I the time not. they get there, it'll be over, you know. I, I don't so, know how people... and, and all the evidence will have been blown up. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't know how they afford the fireworks. I mean, have you have you been to a fireworks stand lately and seen the price of this stuff? Oh, they're, they're ridiculous. There's Holy one right mackerel. by the port over here. Yeah. Oh, they're huge. I mean, you can. Yeah. The ammunition is ammunition for a gun is cheaper. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. That's what well, got a fire your shotgun. <laughs> right now, and now. So, Tom, take it easy in your second childhood, because if if they pop you in jail, I ain't bailing you out, buddy. All right. Okay. You, even though. Even though you're my son, you're going to have to go on your own on this one, okay? All right. Well, I, 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 I can't believe you say that because I can't afford to with Canadian dollars. Yeah, so <laughs> just just remember my rule, Jerry. Don't trust anybody over 60. Well, that's me. <laughs> I'm, over, I'm way over 70, guys. All right. <laughs> have a happy 4th of July, everybody out there in the listening audience. And texters, be nice. Yeah. Be nice to yeah. Tom and Shane. It's a holiday weekend. Okay. Right? We were, we were, yeah. we were, uh, we were, we had one hand tied behind us last week. So we're, <laughs> we're coming back. Uh, always a pleasure, great one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take care. uh, Take care. All right. Jerry, the great one uh, in Big Timber. Thanks for uh, checking in with us because we appreciate that. So, well, the text lines are uh, letting us know about the uh, the $10 fee for (laughs) stepping in the water, Shane. Yeah. Uh, Anglers already paid access through their license. Uh, The $8 fee is to... um, is for floaters. Uh, sometime, uh, you know, someone's got to pay for the uh, tr- the trash pickup, I guess. So I guess that's it. If you float on the uh, uh, on the river, you're going to leave trash everywhere. So somebody's got to go out and pick that up. So 
Uh, your fishing license uh, feed goes to help restock our waterways. Do you want taxpayers to pay for it or anglers to pay for it? Well, my view is stop fish abortion. Close those fish and abortion <laughs> clinics. Uh, let the fish let the fish re, <laughs> repopulate. Uh, we don't have a sales tax, at least $8 uh, with tax. <laughs> Some of those uh, Taurus, <laughs> they want to feed uh, the Ma- or Fulton Madison. Uh, out-of-staters pay a huge cost for a fishing license. Our fats, uh, fish hatcheries cost money to operate. Where do you think, uh, who do you think restocks all the waterways? Someone has to pay, should the fishermen or taxpayers. All right. Well, thanks for that info. Because not being a fisherman, I don't always know all these things. So, uh, more indictments coming. Will Trump supporters realize he's a crook? Jeez, uh, do we care? Yeah, well, the indictments coming aren't going to be against yeah, Trump. I'm say. You got that wrong, there, baby. It's sounds, going the other way. Sounds to me like we got a new January sixth panel in place. <laughs> yeah, for the Bidens. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what kind of a uh, ex-believe deleted uh, station uh, <laughs> does Scott run where, uh, there where he chooses an ISP that goes down with one trunk line gets broken? <laughs> Most landmines now go over the Internet. It's 2023. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, uh, 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 Billings was down, too. Uh, Aaron was down as well uh, while they got this, got this uh, Internet thing fixed, but. And we and we were, of course, we were down here, but we were having issues before that happened. So, but uh, yeah, all right. Uh, from our t- uh, app chat line, AM fourteen fifty KMMS on your smartphone. Right on, John says, "Long hair is freedom, Jerry." <laughs> so there we are. <laughs> all right, that's going to wrap it up for this first segment, Shane. What a fun, uh, what a fun morning we're having, huh? Yes. Yeah. Right off the bat. Talking about your mustache and your hair. Yeah. I love it. And uh, happy Canada Day to Shane. Uh, He'll be uh, breaking out, uh, I I don't know, do they allow fireworks in Canada? Probably not. Yes, well, limitedly. But, yeah, yeah, we're we're having a a a big Canada Day celebration tonight, and we'll be entertaining ourselves outside, having a picnic and a barbecue. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. Watching fireworks. Fireworks are only allowed on the French side, I think, Uh, so. Anyway, yes, that, that's just me. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. Don't go away. We got a lot to talk about this morning. Supreme Court and a bunch of other stuff. So don't go away. We'll be right back with more Tom and Shane right after this. 27 minutes for the top of the hour. It's July 1st, 2023. It's Saturday. Tom and Shane on the air this morning. Happy to have you along with us. Thanks for joining us. And wherever you are and whatever you're uh, doing or up to, uh, we uh, really appreciate that uh, you joined us this morning. A um, couple things I, I want to talk about. Um, one is, <laughs> it's Bobby Bonilla Day, July 1st. Now, <laughs> you're probably thinking, why are we, who's Bobby Bonilla? Why are we hearing about this? But it's it's really an interesting story because it de- it demonstrates that people, there are certain people who have money who, who should not be in control of it. So anyway, Bobby Bonilla was a baseball player. He played for the Mets and uh, Baltimore Orioles. In 1991, in 1991, uh, he signed a five-year, $29 million contract uh, with the uh, with the New York Mets. So 1991, a five-year contract, uh, that would go into, I think, um, 1996, by advanced uh, calculus. And uh, so anyway, he was one of the highest paid uh, baseball players uh, at the time. So, so yeah. So in 1991, he signs this five-year, $29, uh, $29 million contract with the Mets. Now, and again, 1991, $29 million, about $6 million a year for five years. In 1999, uh, his performance had declined, and the Mets were needed to free up salary cap. So rather than releasing Benia and paying him the remaining $5.9 million on his contract, uh, his five-year contract should have been up in 96, not 99. <laughs> I don't know. They must have signed him again. But anyway, 
The, the reason I bring this up is that the uh, Steve Phillips, who was the uh, general manager at the time, uh, came up with a creative way to pay Benia. And uh, he negotiated a, a deferred payment plan with uh, Benia, agreeing to pay him $1.19 million every year for 25 years, starting in 20, uh, 2011. Now, the, the deferred payment would also include 8% interest rate, meaning that by the time Benia received his final payment in 2035, he'll have earned $29.8 million. Uh, this was a bad idea for the Mets, who ended up paying out more than was owed in the first place. Uh, they had anticipated making the payments with money that had been invested through. Guess who they invested their money through? Shane, Bernie Madoff. <laughs> and however, the investment collapsed when Madoff was arrested and the Mets ran out of, of money. But anyway, so they celebrate Bobby Mendia Day because he gets a million, uh, 1.9 million Every year until uh, 2035, Shane. <laughs> I don't know. You can't, you can't make you can't you can't make this stuff up. So if he's alive, if, if, if he doesn't get paid. If, his family doesn't get paid if he dies, right? Do what? Does his family get paid if he dies? Well, I don't know. It doesn't say. Oh. Okay. But I doubt if he's dead. He's. I mean, we're talking about 99. You know, but uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna pay him till twenty thirty five. So anyway, uh, Justin Verlander is the highest paid now, forty three million a year. Shane, forty three million a year to throw a baseball. Who who does he who play, who does he play for? Uh, uh, boy, he was he was traded last year, I think. Was he? I don't know. You'll have to look it up during the during the next break. No, I don't care about baseball. Yeah. Okay. Game of mediocrity to me. It's like cricket. <laughs> That's where it is. Uh, from our text line, interesting question, Shane, 406-478-8298. Why do callers assume texters are men? <laughs> I don't know. Well, be, well it, it's just because of the tone of the question, number one, I would say. Yeah, I mean, it might be the language used, the, the That's phrasing right. and, and things like that. Yeah. You know, and and number two, you know, studies that have been shown and stuff, you know, it's like over eighty percent of it's mostly men that that uh, text mm -hmm. into you know, talk shows and stuff. Yeah, you know, there's there, you know, women um, aren't that uh, eager to engage. Men are men are more confrontational. Uh, That's right. Well, women are confrontational with other women. I, Only I with their spouse. Well, yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got a lot of uh, stuff we got to talk about with the Supreme Court because we had three um, we had three uh, decisions that slapped uh, Joe Biden right in the kisser, Shane. Uh, <laughs> three of them. Well, I, I'd say they slapped him in the ass and kicked him in the face. Yeah. yeah, or, yeah. I would say the oranges, but I'd get in trouble. Yeah. Well, well anyway, uh, the first one, uh, Lori Smith, uh, she's an... Uh, Evangelical Christian uh, challenged Colorado's public accommodation law on free speech grounds. Uh, a same-sex couple wanted her to create a wedding website for her, uh, or to create wedding websites, but uh, Colorado law would demand she create same-sex wedding websites if she wants to uh, do so for opposite-sex union, and Smith is vehemently opposed to gay marriage on religious grounds. So the justices uh, decided in her favor. Uh, I think another Colorado one, uh, the wedding cake uh, one was won uh, by a, a baker in Colorado, I believe, because the baker, not only wouldn't he make uh, same-sex uh, cakes, but he also wouldn't make Halloween cakes. So his religion prohibited him from uh, doing those things, too, so... His religious uh, belief won out there, and it did with this uh, with this lady from Colorado who uh, uh, designs websites. So well, uh, this mm -hmm. this shows you the power of the left. It shows mm -hmm. you the power of the minority gay uh, group. You know that we we've been talking about, and uh, their willingness to 
spend the money, you know, to, to twenty million in seven years to go to the Supreme Court on a case like this mm -hmm. when there's already a precedent. So now there's yeah. two precedences, mm -hmm. but uh, you'll see this continue because they want to expand their their minority from what it is, and they want to show that everyone that contributes back to them, you know, to do these things that they're doing doing this. So waste of time, waste of money, and a sad group of people that have all the rights they're entitled to already. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, affirmative action is the next one, Shane, that popped up uh, before the courts, uh, obviously. Big one. This is yeah. good. This is, this is really a big one. And this goes back to 2003 when Sandra Day O'Connor uh, had the majority opinion uh, when affirmative action um, cases came before that uh, court. And she said the court expects that 25 years from now, and this is in 2023, or uh, 20, 2003, sorry. So that 25 years would be two, uh, 2028. Uh, the court expects that 25 years from now, the use of racial preferences will no longer be necessary to further the interest uh, proved today. So what do you think, Shay? <laughs> well, that's not 25 years, but it's 20 years at least. And, well, she was uh, right. Yeah. But but there, there's, there's, there's a couple of things here that are important. That are important. Uh, you know, this this goes to the aristocracy and the uh, and, you know the education of your people. Um, it, it was an ambitious plea to the Supreme Court back in '03. Basically, what she was saying is, we will accept your premise that by doing this, that it will be there will it will provide more diversity. And so so they took a leap of faith. Um, of the pleadings of the plaintiff wanting this to, have, to be enacted. It, it would, it, you know, Sandra Day goes on to say this is completely against what the Constitution says, and it will be overturned in the future. Uh, but the second thing is, is that that's the case. I mean, it's completely contrary to the Constitution. And here we are 25 years later, and we find out that not only did they reject it because of that, but they reject it because... It didn't work. And what it's become now is a racist uh, cry for other minorities like Asians, mm -hmm. like uh, indigenous people, uh, like Mexican-Americans, and like uh, poor white people. So it, it, it's one of these cases where you have to stand up and go, wow, mm -hmm. the Supreme Court just, you know, yeah. changed the ruling they've made. I mean, you know, we've talked about others uh, that the Supreme Court has done, but mm -hmm. th that's the historical thing. Th this is an old, older Supreme Court, you know, decision that they've mm -hmm. now changed. So th this whole the rancor by the woke left about the Supreme Court and it's all wrong and they don't. Uh, I mean, it, it, they they should be going out there and parading about the fact they said, uh, you know, we we did it we allowed this but we, you know it's, it's wrong and we now have to change it yeah. but they don't do that it's very sad well I think if you if you believe that universities aren't going to continue uh, admitting people based on all sorts of uh, unfair criteria uh, I got a bridge uh, oh, over a dozen have already said that yeah it's, it's, yeah they're gonna, they're gonna ignore it unless unless lawsuits are brought against oh, yeah. Them. yeah that's right within hours they they, they would yeah. But uh, the sad thing is for the group that took the, took up this cause, you know, they have to go to uh, civil court now to get uh, mm -hmm. damages because n none of the none of the decisions by any of the lower courts, in, courts including the appellate courts, uh, included damages. So now we'll see what kind of damages that that great uh, you know law college in the United States with 20 an endowment fund of 27 billion dollars might have to pay for doing this way it'd be interesting to see mm -hmm. well I think so yeah well this is this hit Biden pretty hard this was a campaign promise uh, that he wanted to keep uh, I think and um, you know it, well the other thing too is that 87 percent of the people are going to pay the 13 percent that didn't pay their loans or don't want to pay their loans so oh you're changing now now you're talking about the student loan decision they made oh i'm sorry okay, yeah i was yeah i'm sorry i was uh i pulled, up, right. I pulled up the next i pulled up the next one and 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. The next one is yeah. Yeah, with student uh, student debt, and I don't think anybody wanted that. Uh, people, you know, everybody listening to us right now uh, that's an adult has probably had some kind of a loan or some kind of a thing uh, where they agreed to pay something back to someone who get, did something for them, and I, I don't think any of them um, wanted to renege on the, you know, renege on that agreement unless it was monetarily impossible or they lost a job or who knows what. But, but when you make a, a contractual agreement to pay someone something, uh, you live up to that agreement. And, well, the amazing thing, three, yeah. three of the, it was a six to three decision. Yeah. And of, of the six justices that said, you know, this is illegal. It's against the Constitution. Uh, three of them in their pleadings that they, which, by the way, uh, amazingly enough, you know, we should mention that um, the LGBTQ issue that mm -hmm. they they read their their uh, decisions out loud in the court, which mm -hmm. is r really amazing. Um, but back to the uh, student loan issue. So three of them actually used. Speaker Pelosi's comment when when Biden brought this up <laughs> two years ago as Speaker of the House, she said he has no right as president to do this. This is under the scope and the powers of the House yeah. for, because they they handle all the, you know, the spending uh, and uh, and and he has nothing to do with it. And so it, it's the irony of it is they mm -hmm. actually used the Democrat Speaker of the House Pelosi's words against the Biden argument. So mm -hmm. from the very beginning, they knew this wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just did. The, it, it, this was all about the election of 2020 and 22 and uh, buying up, buying votes by making these promises. Mm -hmm. uh, they lied. That, that's all they do is lie. It's a consistent thing that they do. And uh, it damages uh, the country. It damages all your, you know, all your traditional values. I, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it, it damages the, the, the credibility of the, co you know, all, all, your government. I mean, it's just because they, they just, uh, you know, basically buy votes of, of, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of young voters who owe money and don't want to pay the government. It, it, wow. Yeah. It's it's. It's really bad. Well, Biden has said uh, he's going to take it out of the Department of Education and just put it in the general budget. Uh, so, but it doesn't matter, Tom. We've talked yeah. about it. The, 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 it's a debt the U.S. holds already. Mm -hmm. they, they they hold it. So, so it, it's uh, it's like it, I mean the, the comparison is to someone that owns the IRS money. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, you know, they they, they they throw people in prison and don't pay their taxes. Well, I realize that, but in this yeah, so, in this I mean, case, like the, in this yeah. case, he just got to use creative accounting, uh, put it over there where it'll just be ignored and it'll be another loss on the on the balance sheet, yeah, and it'll 69. go on the national debt. Uh, so, what's the big deal? Sixty-nine thousand or something people. Sixty-nine thousand people owe this money or whatever. It Forty is. million. Forty million, million borrowers. 60, I, yeah. I was going to say sixty-nine million, but then I knew that. All right, but the bottom line: so you have forty million people that owe this money. But the the, mm -hmm. the takeaway from this is, if you read his case, it was really mm -hmm. to try and protect people that owe over a hundred grand. That that's mm -hmm. who it really was. Honest. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah. And, you know, people that were making, you know, he's saying, you know, if this was going to help people under 125 grand, under 125 grand. So people like doctors, lawyers, you know, people that went to college for four or eight years. And, well, and then, you know, they, they they shouldn't have to pay back. These are the highest paid people in your country. Well, 100, 100 grand uh, in New York City or Los Angeles or whatever is a is a garbage hauler or a. Uh, you know, a factory worker or, or whatever. It's not doctors and lawyers because the the rent in uh, for a one bedroom in New York City is something like thirty five hundred a month. You know, so any doctors and lawyers that are, that are making the money there. So one hundred twenty five grand is pretty low. You'd be in poverty in New York or L A or San Francisco. Well, there you go. So anyway, 10, uh, 10 grand for borrowers who uh, meet income requirements and 20,000 for Pell Grant recipients. Now Pell Grants don't have to be paid back. Anyway, so 
I don't I don't know why I threw that in there. But what do I know? Well, we we came up with a solution to this three years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, regrettably it didn't go viral because nobody uh, in Washington took it up as a consideration of how to deal with it, and uh, it, it's not going to go away. It's a death that the government has. It's mm -hmm. and and, and uh, the the it's funny because a corporation would write it off for taxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> For tax purposes, they'd write off because they're not getting paid, right? Like, yeah, they, they'd write it off as a bad debt. Yeah, but the, the U.S. can't just write off 1.7 billion or trillion trillion, right? Yeah, 1.7 like trillion yeah. dollars. Yeah. You know, it's just crazy. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, student it's, loan uh, debt right now is 1.8 trillion. 1.8 trillion, Shane. That's a lot of money that's owed by uh, all these. Uh, Rugrats in college. Uh, and to remind everyone that this all occurred back in the 80s when when uh, banks refused to start uh, to continue. Banks refused to lend money for people to go to college mm -hmm. because no one was paying them back. They, you know, they just weren't. Yeah. So the government took it up uh, under legislation by the Democrats that, oh, well, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll lend you money. Now, it, it, didn't they accuse a guy that had a college and it, it, it was about a $35,000 fee and people, and it was about real estate. And then, you know, and, and then they said he was cheating people. And then there were complaints by those people. And then he just canceled the debt. What, what, right? Wasn't there a guy that did that? Yeah, Trump. Not but, they, you know, they beat Trump up about the, something like this when he, he does what he yeah. felt was the right thing, shut it down, uh, pay, yeah. you know, pay, cancel the debts. And uh, keep going. Yeah. But you know the government. The government doesn't have an answer. They just use it for their own purposes, mm -hmm. which in this case was an election in 2020 and or 2022. From our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight. If the government's going to pay off student loan debt, my mortgage should get paid off. And I agree with that. Yeah. If you're going to pay, it's good for the goose, good for the gander. So. Except his mortgage is with a uh, bank. Yeah. Now, if it was with Freddie Mae or Freddie Mac, I would mm -hmm. say, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Those are both go government mm -hmm. you know, operations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Buy my vote. Pay off my mortgage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Right. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, your recent tax letter shows an increase in assessment, not an increase in mill levies. Real estate has gone up in value 50 to 80 percent. Yeah, the uh, the mill levies will change uh, based on your uh, property values. But a lot of people, you're getting your tax bills now. So a lot of people are uh, feeling the pain of uh, uh, property taxes. New audio of Trump. Uh, well, audio doesn't count because you can't see what he's holding in his hand. I don't care what he what he said. Uh, Patriots accept election results even when our side loses. That's called democracy. Yeah. Well, we've we accepted the results. So, what's your problem? Right. Rule, the rule of the majority and rights of the minority. That, that's, that's how the, it works. Yeah. It's just that simple. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Well, I took something out of there, I guess. Yeah. Uh, why do you assume that a texture who criticizes Donald Trump is a liberal Democrat? Um, we never Trumpers are conservatives. No, you're not. You're not even close to being a conservative. Don't even don't even go there. Don't even go there. <laughs> You're a you're a you're a Bidenomics Bidenomics. Uh, that's who you are. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder who got the gold star for that one. I don't know. I don't know but yeah. Yep. See the the problem with with if you're if you're talking about being a conservative um, and you start talking about a single individual. That doesn't that doesn't carry any weight at all, because conservatives or liberals 
Liberals don't talk about Biden. They talk about issues. Conservatives talk about issues. They don't talk about they don't talk about Trump. They don't talk about Bush. They don't talk about Obama. They don't talk about you know. Uh, we talk about issues. So the fact that Trump did something, so what? Bush did something, so what? Obama did something, so what? <laughs> I mean, geez, get over it. You know. Plus, and, Trump's and the not. So what? Trump's and the so what? And the so what is is all the same thing. They wrote books. Well, so yeah. what? Yeah. So what? Yeah. Trump's not in power. Do you get it? <laughs> He's nothing. He's a private okay. citizen. You know. If they put him in jail, more power to him. If he's guilty, you know, throw throw the book at him. Yeah, I get tired every week of having you. Well, you're defending Trump. No, I'm not. <laughs> he's he's nobody till uh, if he wins the primary, and depending on who he's running against, yeah, we'll talk about it. But till then, I don't care. Oh, well, come on. He's still another guy on the stage. Well, that's true. And he'll be in the middle of the stage, too. Of course. So he's not going to be on the ad where Jeb was. Yeah. So with, with Jeb's 80 million bucks in the Yeah, in the I remember bank. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Dre, blame Trump for everything. Put on your clown hat. Yeah, well, put on your, put on your uh, whatever the hat is, those people at the... Helicopter. Parades wear. Put on that helicopter. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, we don't care if he accepts a loss or not. We did. So if he will if he comes back, by all means, you, you can not vote for him. It's that simple. <laughs> all right. One hour in the can. We've still got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, we've got, um, well... The latest Hunter Biden, uh, Trump, and the uh, electric vehicles, uh, shortages of electric car makers, GOP. Who's the GOP going to impeach next, Shane? We're going to talk about that as we go down. The, they can't decide who, who they want to impeach first. So we're going to talk about that when we come back. So stay tuned. we got a lot of fun morning still left to go. We'll be right back after the news. Stay tuned. Seven minutes after the hour of 9 a.m. It's Saturday. It's July 1st, 2023. Welcome to July, Shane. Uh, the year's half over. And the biggest yeah. thing about July 1st is we're out of Pride Month. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Jeez. I got to tell you, I, I don't know, man. That's uh, That was a long month. Well, they took advantage of it. Yeah, they certainly did, yeah. Yep, we're coming for your children. <laughs> no problem there. Uh, you got a laugh on your helicopter beanie, Shane, from one of our texters. Uh, yeah, there, there you go. You go. <laughs> uh, let's see, Michigan legislature passed a bill that if you misgender or use the wrong pronoun, you can face up to five years in prison and a $10,000 fine. All Democrats voted for this. All Republicans voted against it. The governor executed are expected to sign uh, if the Democrats have their way our country will be run by illegal aliens, uh, LGBTQ and uh, Black Lives Matter, communists and criminals. So Shane, what are the penalties if you use the wrong pronoun in Canada? Well, it isn't uh, so much using a wrong pronoun, um, but if you say, if you make a comment publicly uh, that's not true, or you um, say something uh, that the government thinks is uh, would, would cause damage or cause people to react in a violent way, like a demonstration or something of that yeah. nature, you, you can be charged. And, and uh, uh, so you know, it, it's basically a, a limit of free speech. You know, it's the yelling fire in a theater. Yeah. You, go, you can go to jail for it. But let's put it that way. Well, there you are. So, But you can yell fire in an empty theater, I think. No, no. You can? Yeah. No. Well, if it's you empty, can. who's going to know I yell fire? No, uh, it's just, that's why none of it makes sense. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
Just got my new tax appraisal. The Gallatin bandits are raising me a mere 50%. That's from our listener, Rick. Well, Thanks, Rick, Rick, you I voted your for pain. them or whoever got out and whoever got out and voted on election day for these people, mm-hmm. they're the ones you should complain to because mm-hmm. you've got the government you elected. Yeah. So I, yeah. you can't complain about it. Well, if you're happy because of the uh, website uh, gender uh, situation, if you're happy for affirmative action, and if you're happy you don't have to pay off somebody else's student debt, <laughs> then thank Donald Trump and the Republicans for three Supreme Court justices who follow the Constitution. Well, that and this this case in Michigan you just brought up, right? Yeah. You know, that that will be challenged. And uh, again, it, it'll be a, a long covered wagon trip to the Supreme mm-hmm. Court to say it's unconstitutional. But yeah. on an appellate court decision, it will be determined that it is. It, it, it just is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. It's astonishing your binary thinking. Uh, if I don't worship your mango messiah, I must be a liberal Democrat. Sad. True Republicans, true conservatives support other candidates like DeSantis. Uh, Trump is not a Republican, and Trump is going to jail. If Trump represents the Republican Party, then I'm out of my party. Died in 2016. Why? What conservative? Val- what Congress doesn't have conservative values. Uh, mm-hmm. The Senate doesn't have conservative values. The Supreme Court doesn't have uh, conservative values. Why are you leaving? Well, yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I, this is probably mm-hmm. the single greatest difference between the parties in your country. Uh, the, you know, the conservative party, the Republican Party, is a party of family values, traditions, and religion, for sure. Yeah. But, the, you know, the de- demolition party, you know, they, they think mankind is greater than God. They can change your kids' mm-hmm. uh, biology. They can, tra- you know, transgress males to females and back and forth and give mm-hmm. them rights. They're called secularists, and they're secularists because they think in the yeah. great. They think of the uh, that the, it's the greatest. The, the man is the greatest, and they have mm-hmm. no belief in a god or or any religious faith. So yeah. <laughs> it's an accepted fact. It's it's been known for. Had a part of 200 years in your country, but you vote Democrat, you you basically a secularist, a non-believer. Well, I was going to say, uh, look at look at every major Democrat city and how it's run and the shambles they're in: Chicago, Detroit, Baltimore, New York. Uh, you know the list. San Francisco. I mean, the list is endless. Well, that's why I have so much problem with minorities that mm-hmm. that are a people of faith yeah. that continue to vote for a secularist party yeah. i mean they've done it for 80 years i i yeah. i don't understand the con we, we to some degree i do you know government provides a lot of them you know what what they have to to literally live yeah uh so that that's why they do it but mm-hmm. you know it's sort of like i i can't come up with an analogy but why would you keep voting for the guy that doesn't really help you? I mean, they've mm-hmm. helped you, but you don't have to still keep voting for them because <laughs> if, if yeah. they're really not supporting you, right? If, if they're if they're lying to you, or your mm-hmm. kids aren't getting educated, or you, the 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 people in your family that do work aren't getting a fair shake, like yeah. well, yes, you got you got government benefits, but you don't have to vote for them once you've got the benefits. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, no bail in uh, all these cities. Uh, shoplifting oh. is rampant. Uh, uh, stores are moving out. People have to lock up their products in their stores. Uh, is that? Is that? Uh, I mean, you keep voting for that same that same thing. When are you going to well, change? Yeah, poli- yeah, politicians are great for creating political theory or, or p- political ideas that can become fact. Well, mm-hmm. Mayor Giuliani created a theory. Of broken windows, yeah. uh, you, we, we can define it. Basically, yeah. any small crime leads to bigger. Crime. If, if a small crime isn't isn't uh, dealt with, leads to mm-hmm. bigger or yeah, it leads to bigger and worse crimes. And it, it started out as a as a legal theory and in, in, uh, in, in New York City, but it worked, and it took it turned the New York City around from mm-hmm. destitute 
and Times Square to be the most popular spot to be in the world on New Year's Eve. So mm -hmm. the fact is clear. I mean, the, Bloomberg, a Democrat, continued it through his two terms as, as mayor of New York. And then mm -hmm. along come these woke mayors of uh, New York that dumped it. And it's, now the city, it's a dump again, like it was back in mm -hmm. the, the 70s and 80s. Yeah. So, you know, the, it, they, they always talk in Washington about governors and states being the, you know, sort of the laboratories of democracy coming up with ideas. And now you, now you can see in the cities, it's, it's, it's the same thing. You, you, clearly on a national basis, you know, not what to do, but no yeah. one seems to be accountable for it. It's, it's not, mm -hmm. the irony is thick, but it's not funny. You keep propping Trump up every week with your 10 lies about what happened while he was president. Uh, never had to do that with Ronald Reagan. Well, if I'd been on the air with Ronald Reagan, maybe I'd done the same thing. But uh, they're not <laughs> lies. Uh, they're public record. Go look. And I've, I've done the 10 lies for 16 weeks. So I think I made my point. Not only that, but that, that, that's, a, that's 160 separate and individual yeah. things he did. Yeah. And uh, the the bottom line is mm -hmm. you, you you saw the results you lived the results yeah, yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. but it, apparently the fact that he texted or had a you know a, a, an email account or a you know whatever was more important to you what he had to say mm -hmm. about people than what he did for your benefit and your family sort of a weird way for people to make a decision to vote I think yeah. I uh, I could be wrong. I don't know. You know, Bill Gates wasn't a great guy, but Microsoft's OK. Uh, you know, I, I don't know about the guys at Google are Democrat uh, left wing uh, Kool-Aid drinkers with extra scotch. Uh, you know, but I still use Google. Costco well, Democrat that, yeah, goes that, to de Democrats. I still shop at Costco. That's right. But, you know, Microsoft and, and uh, Facebook were created by other people and the people running them or, you know, who got the benefit weren't even responsible for what, what they, what they have, yeah. you know, and basically they took the idea from someone else. Um, in the case of Facebook, it was proven in court. And in the case of uh, Microsoft, yeah, you know, history just proves it because of what happened yeah. to you know the other company. But, a guy like you know uh, Apple comes along, and a guy a guy like uh, Tesla comes along and creates these companies, or a guy like Dell comes along, and you know they these guys are, for some reason at the beginning they start out to be pets of the the woke and the left, and then when they determine that they're probably conservative, they they turn on them like pretty quick. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. I mean, look at Apple. Uh, Apple became a trillion-dollar company, solid this year mm -hmm. or this week. And uh, you know, people are saying it's going to go to two trillion. And I, I'm, I'm sorry, I just, uh, I'm one of these people. I, I don't know. I get maybe I'm too practical, but I, I, I just don't see it happening. But others are saying mm -hmm. that. Well, they, uh, they are right now the most valuable company at three trillion uh, bucks, and. Uh, Remember back when Microsoft, uh, Bill Gates, uh, bailed him out uh, to make sure that Bill wasn't a monopoly. So that's right. <laughs> and look where they've look where they've come uh, since then. So they've uh, you can't blame or you can't. Uh, that's why I say about Trump. You could say what you want to about him personally, but his successes uh, speak for themselves. Well, that's right, and and Bill Gates also did it because he he had created a monopoly with with Microsoft's operating system, so he, he, you're right. I mean, it was clearly a a, uh, a financial move uh, and a smart investment, so he could maintain his monopoly by have you know mm -hmm. claiming that he's supporting someone to compete with him. Yeah, uh, you know, to a large degree, that's that's still the case. Well, it is. But yeah. you, 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 the thing that saved you know, uh, Apple was was their phone, and it's only 12 years old. I mean, it only happened 12 yeah. years ago. Well, the, That's incredible. It's well, incredible. Well, the thing that saved Apple was they got rid of the uh, Pepsi guy and brought Steve Jobs back uh, is what saved Apple. Oh, let's see. Uh, 
if you have to keep reminding people how great your president was, maybe he wasn't that great. Uh, maybe it was a lie. Well, I have to keep, I don't have to keep reminding people. People know. I just have to keep reminding you. Well, yeah, but these same people keep reminding us that Obama's a great president. Yeah. Where, where do they find out he, he's the big guy in the Biden crime family? I was going to say, yeah, we should we should talk about that briefly, Shane, because uh, I think so. I, yeah. I, you know, I know it's a shot in the dark, but I, I well, we, let, I've let, learned the last two weeks. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, let Shane and I make this case for you. We'll go all the way back to when he was in the Ukraine, uh, talking about I'm going to get on okay. the plane. Uh, you know, fire the prosecutor or you're not getting the billion dollars. And what did he what did he say to the people there? He said, uh, you're the guy says, you're not the president. And he said, call him. So obviously, right. Obama knew about this deal and Hunter of course. and the uh, so that's why that's one of the reasons we think uh, that he's well, the and big that, guy. let's not stop there because. Remember, under Obama, the deep state was really created. The the swamp was because Obama, being the first black president, blah 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 blah. The, like mm -hmm. all the security agencies, they fell on their knees to him, and mm -hmm. you know the NH, NH all the everybody in the in the government in the in the deep state fell all the on their knees to Obama. And so yeah, so Obama knew what was going on over there. Mm -hmm. I mean, and he knew what what he was doing when he was sending over Biden, because Biden had been doing this while he was in the Senate. Everybody knew it. Yeah. So, it is, yeah, so that's number one. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, when you talk about Obama, you don't you don't go from uh, an Illinois senator, uh, well, you don't go to the Senate from Illinois unless you're in with the Chicago mob. I mean, that just doesn't happen. You got to right. you got to be in with everybody uh, in Chicago, or otherwise you you're not you're not going to be there. And you yeah. may claim on your taxes that you bought the homes and properties, and you were seventy million dollars because of the books and and you know the what you were paid, what you've been paid to go and make speeches. No, no, no. The, the, the secret this they look the politicians figured this out in the eighties. Mm -hmm. Write a book. And then everybody, including Dirty Money, buys your book. Yeah, there are warehouses all over the United States filled with two or three hundred political politician books written in the last thirty years yeah. that have you know never seen a bookshelf. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a million books be in storage because they were bought to put money in people's pockets. So keep going. So okay. now Obama, mm -hmm. flash forward. Well, Obama flashing forward. Um, we now have uh, Bob Alinsky coming in, and he's talking about Hunter, uh, ten percent for the big guy, right. and there's no mention of Biden. Now Biden was vice president through all this. That's the key to this. Biden didn't really have that much power. The somebody years ago said the vice presidency is like a pitcher of warm spit. You know, it's not, there's not much there. You know, you, you go to state funerals and you oversee the Senate every once in a while if you have to vote. And that's about all you do. That's right. You're the president of the Senate and you should yeah. be sitting there every day when it's in, ses in session. Yeah. But they're incessant about doing nothing. So yeah. most vice presidents don't do their job. So mm -hmm. the, the, the reason I, 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 because of what's happened in, like, in the last couple of weeks is all this discussion or claims that uh, Hunter was sitting with his father, talking to China, mm -hmm. demanding their $5 million each. And, mm -hmm. and they were, he was saying to this guy, I'm sitting here with my dad. And then you go back and you, you start looking at all these references that we know are, are out there already in the public, uh, in, um, in, in the computer hell you know, mm -hmm. issue with uh, Hunter. There, there's no reference to his father as the big guy, yeah. he, but he does talk about his father and how he has has mm -hmm. to pay for his expenses and pay for his home. And yeah, but he doesn't reference it as ten percent. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that we know that he got keys for uh, for President Biden and his his now Joe wife for the offices that Hunter had, and mm -hmm. and so all you put all this stuff together, and it's not mm -hmm. too hard to say. Okay, I'm Biden and I, or I'm Obama and I'm sitting there. Okay, I'm letting all this corruption go on underneath me, but you know, I don't, I'm not greedy, so I don't want my ten percent. Yeah. And I'm gonna write a book, guys. And so when I write my book, that's how you pay me. You yeah. know, you buy all my, buy a bunch of my books. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so I mean, it, yeah. it's just like, yeah. I've, I've always said, you know, 
I believe the, the smoking gun are credit cards. You know, mm -hmm. you, they should be checking on Hunter Biden's credit cards and and see if he gave a, a you know a, 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 an extra one to his dad, you know, under his name yeah. to, to use because you know I, I did that with my wife. You know, yeah. she she had no credit because she worked at home. So I mm -hmm. you know I got her a credit card under my name. But it, 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 it's these little things that you know and you've learned and you pick up that. Mm -hmm. You've heard now, like public knowledge, and I don't know with with the far steps some of these people have done to go and try and get Trump. This doesn't seem that hard to stretch to thinking. Oh my gosh, it's not just Biden. Yeah. So, you know, you know, don't try to impeach him. Like we, I said on our podcast, bad political move. Yeah. Bad policy move. Well, it you wouldn't work anyway. The you Senate, get accused of not going to convict him. Yeah. Senate won't convict yeah. him. So. Well, the he other thing, anyway, so. yeah. The other thing but, too, we've got this email uh, from to the Chinese guy where uh, Hunter Biden's trying to shake him down. Uh, the fact that he says Dad's sitting next to me twice, uh, to me, that's a bluff. Uh, he's bluffing. I I don't think Biden was in the room. I don't think Biden yeah, was I, even I there. I appreciate that. I don't even think Biden. He, well, hang on, uh, let me finish. You'll get your. It's a three-hour well, show. Repeating what I said. It's a three-hour show. Repeating what I said. No, I'm not. I'm repeating what I yeah, said. I just said that. <laughs> I said, I, I don't think he was, you know, he may have been in the house somewhere. He might have not even known that uh, Hunter was making the email or sending the email. So, <laughs> you know, but I I think that's a, I think that's a bluff. I, I'm not going to lay that email at, at uh, Joe's doorstep. But the important thing to me on that email is, is it may be a bluff and, and he may be saying that, but even in the reference does not say 10% or anything about the big guy. And if it was a real email, if it was his dad, he would have referenced 10% to his dad uh, and and uh, not asking for the same amount of money. And he'd be re referencing to his dad, to the guy as, you know, he's the big guy. And he's the big guy sitting next to me. So uh, what I'm just saying, when you put all this together, I don't think that the press have investigated it properly, and I think that the House is investigating it. Keep doing it. Create create more to dump on him, because if you don't, you mm -hmm. impeaching him, you get Camilla. Yeah. If you keep investigating him, uh, you know, he, he just decides not to run. He ha hasn't signed up for the Colorado primary, hasn't signed up for Iowa, hasn't signed up for New Hampshire. So I, I don't I think it's gonna. This dam is gonna just explode mm -hmm. with so much that the Democratic Party is just gonna say to him, "You, you can't run. I yeah. mean, the, your aides, the polls, everything's yeah. a mess. We don't want Camilla. Mm -hmm. You know, we we want to. You know, we you just tell everyone you're not running. So uh, that that I'd I love. I I want to see the shift mm -hmm. in the polls on the Republican side. When that happens, because I, 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 that will happen. I, I expect mm -hmm. it obviously before the end of the year. Uh, but when it happens, the polls in the Republican primary just have to shift completely, right? Like, because uh, Biden's out of it now. What? Well, it'll be a, a Republican probably for sure. Yeah. But which one? Well, in the in the next hour, we're going to be talking about uh, someone who could come in there. Uh, or some group that could come in there. So we'll be talking about that when we come back. So All right. All Good right. Man. That's going to wrap it up for this segment. And, uh, hey, we're half done. So glad you're here. Happy uh, Saturday, July 1st. Uh, hey, it's halfway through the year. We only got uh, six months left. And uh, it's great outside. We're in the 80s. So get out and enjoy yourself. Spend some money, uh, support your local retailers, and uh, have a good time while you're while you're off. All right, always picnic safe. Uh, always use condiments. We'll be right back. Twenty-seven minutes for the top of the hour. It's Saturday. It's July first, twenty twenty-three. Happy to have you along with us. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate uh, that. And uh, let's see uh, from the texters. Uh, let's see if we can find something a little different. Uh, let's see, 478 uh, 8298. Trump, 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 Trump is always living free in these people's heads. They don't have uh, they don't have two thoughts to rub together that don't include Trump. Speaking of Apple, excuse me. Huh? 
Speaking of Apple, uh, thoughts on their logo, bite from an apple, Adam and Eve. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, I've always wondered about that, where they had the their uh, Apple logos, uh, Apple with a bite out of it. So, uh, Let's see. Uh, what else? Uh, most politicians get to Washington with little money, become millionaires. Uh, Trump didn't need the money and didn't need the problems. Uh, Trump loves America and was a good president, ask yourself if things are better now under the incompetent, senile, treasonous fool, uh, Joe Biden. Yeah, ask yourself that. Are you better off than you were two years ago? <laughs> uh, yeah, gas went up another nickel, but that's not on presidents, as I keep saying, but they are up another nickel. Oh, let's see. Uh... Trump's failure to repair and replace Obamacare, one of his campaign promises. Well, let's talk about that for a second. What did Trump do uh, during uh, oh, the uh, Obamacare? Well, the House Republicans uh, tried for years to cut off the subsidies that help low-income Obamacare enrollees. And in case you don't, in case you're not familiar with what Obamacare is, you got the bronze, the gold, the silver, and the platinum. Uh, the lower you are on the on the scale, so for example, on the bronze plan, which is the cheapest plan, 40%, you have to pay 40% of the medication on that plan or the hospitalization or whatever it is. Uh, on the, um, uh, the silver plan, let's see, what is it? No, it's, uh, what is it, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, yeah. So uh, bronze, the silver plan, you're paying 30%. The gold plan is the same as Medicare. You're paying 20% out of pocket. And the platinum plan, you pay 10% out of pocket. So, so the health exchanges didn't collapse as, hope, as Trump hoped they would. Instead, the health plans and states quickly figured out they could claw back the federal dollars they lost they built the cost of the subsidies into premiums for Obamacare's silver policies. This meant that premiums for those silver plans spiked, and as a result, the premium subsidies the government had to pay for low-income enrollees vastly increased. So the concept known as silver loading grew government subsidizing of the exchanges by upwards of $20 billion a year. So while Trump's uh, moves made Obamacare uh, plans increasingly unaffordable for the unsubsidized. Democrats quickly tamped down their criticism since it accomplished their goal of significantly boosting funding for Obamacare. And the Biden administration didn't do one thing, Shane, to uh, reduce the cost to the silver folks on Obamacare. And he, he also hasn't got an election thing. No, he, if I I'm go sorry. ahead. No, I, I was going to add that also the tariffs are still in place. Uh, Biden hasn't done anything with any tariffs. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. So the important thing here is it was the Republicans that looked at uh, the health care system back during the Reagan administration, and they said, we, we need to fix this. So Re Reagan, uh, his proposal... Uh, was to uh, deal with the emergency they were that they were in under, and that was hospitals were going bankrupt because people were coming into the emergency rooms and uh, not not paying. Uh, so what the the government did was uh, they passed a law saying no one can be refused in an emergency room, mm -hmm. but we will cover the costs if they don't pay. So that that was the that was the first step of the slippery slope of socialized medicine in your country. Now you speed forward thirty years, and Obama comes along and makes all these great promises. The problem is, under all of this of what you just explained, they never changed the the, the Reagan guideline for emergency room care. So instead of uh, you know seventy percent of the emergency room care is uh, people that d have no insurance. It went to 80%. And instead of reducing the amount of money uh, to save hospitals, it increased. So they sort of just rolled it in to, to Obamacare. And uh, that, of course, that's how your government works. 
But the, the sad reality is when they set this all up, they based it on, like you said, Medicare and Medicaid. Mm -hmm. um, the bottom line to all of this was they should have uh, completely wiped out the requirement of uh, any retired person having to come up with any percentage for their health care. Yeah. Uh, when you're retired, you shouldn't mm -hmm. have to pay for diddly squat. Y you've been there, done that, paid your taxes, built the country. It's your time in your life where you shouldn't go bankrupt when you're getting older and more likely mm -hmm. to get sick when you didn't paying your taxes all your life. And then, you know, have to pay 10 percent, which can bankrupt you. So there you go. There, there's my my rant. OK. From our app chat line, AM 1450 on your uh, uh, cell phone. Smartphone. <laughs> Ooh, smartphone. Yeah, like smartphone, that. yeah. Uh, I know it will be a book, but for a while, you could do 20-count list every week of the lies and failures of the Democrats since Obama. The, le the left number one word is lies when they talk about Trump with no facts. So and that's what I say. You know, it's easy to cherry-pick the bad things. But, uh, you know, I'll... As I say, I'll I'll take success over personality anytime. You know, if you're mm -hmm. if you're working for the American people, I don't care if you're a low life scumbag. As long as you're getting it done, that's all that counts. Now they are. So there I am. So so anyway, that's where uh, that's where I stand on that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, Trump's failed pandemic response. Biden would have done so much better, right? Yeah, if, if the pandemic had come along during Biden, what do you think, Shane? What what would he have done? Do you think he'd have shut well, off I, China? I, I, <laughs> I, I, we we'll we'll never know. But yeah. the, no, the bottom line to all of this, all of it, <laughs> was uh, the great thing about Trump is he was a businessman, and businessmen every day that own companies solve problems. Mm -hmm. So that's all he is, a problem solver every day. Yeah. You know, in the case of his industry that he's in is real estate primarily. So he, when he was in the White House, that's all he did, solve problems or find people who would help him solve problems. So mm -hmm. it, he made this decision all on his own, never denied it. I always said that was the case. The minute he heard about this, it, sound, it didn't sound right. And he shut down air traffic, which was mm -hmm. the smartest thing he could do. Now, remember, nobody had ever done that before except once. And that was 9-11. And the FAA, some unelected person in charge of the FAA, uh, shut down all air traffic over the United States. And 12,000 planes had to land. So it, it, this wasn't like that immer immediate, but it did take place. Mm -hmm. And uh, he shut it down. He, he prevented people from coming from China. So the, mm -hmm. uh, the one thing that we now know is true. Whatever you can say once it happened... He saved probably one or two million lives in 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 that decision alone. I mean, his first decision in this probably saved at least two million people, basically yeah. in the United States. Uh, terrible disease, you know, one of 118 different variants, and he tried to come up with a solution to it, and uh, he got all he did was get lied to. I mean, it's yeah. unfortunate for a president that really does rely on advice from other people to make decisions, and they lie to you. That, that's, yeah. to me, the terrible thing about the whole, the whole issue. I was going to say, the book's pretty well open on Fauci and what he knows. Yeah, he lied. Lied, 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 stuff. lied. Yeah. yeah. Well, let, I mean, let's let's go back oh, just a let's go back just a sure. second because uh, yeah. Trump did send a hospital ship to New York. They didn't need it. He turned the Javits Center into a hospital. Well, they didn't, they didn't they did need, need it. it. No, but they they did need it, but they didn't use it because yeah. he would have got credit. Yeah. So they let people die. I mean, and, yeah. and they're not even accountable for it. Like the governor mm -hmm. of New York, the mayor of New York, they, they yeah. let people die because they, they didn't want to give Trump credit. I mean, that's how sick these people are. That's <laughs> sick. That's beyond yeah. sick, okay? Mm -hmm. That's criminal. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. From our text line, 478-8298, I drank the Obama Kool-Aid. He came to West Yellowstone, and I was enthralled until I filed my taxes and ended up losing my refund and having to pay for insurance I didn't have that hurt financially as a single parent. So thank you, Obama, for your wonderful care. 
Uh. Well, the, astound, the astounding <laughs> thing is, and th this is why it's still around. When, when you look at Obamacare and what they created in this, was they, they wanted to regulate basically the costs like in a lot of socialized co countries like Britain and Canada. So we have standard costs for doctors, mm -hmm. you know, for what they can do for whatever remedial or serious injury or sickness you have. So like any office meeting with a doctor or phone call with a doctor in, in Canada, he gets 85 bucks, all right? That, that's just the bottom mm -hmm. line. He, that, that's it. He doesn't get $85 an hour to see you. He just, every time he talks to you, he gets 85 bucks. So the regulations that they created, and that, you know, the thing about the woke left, the demolition party, is they're great at regulations. But 20,000, 20,000 regulations, you know, right down to what they can charge for a Band-Aid to what they can charge for surgery and, and on up. And yeah. those are all still on the books. And that's why uh, when you think, see this stuff like this transgender issue, this is all new medicine. So it doesn't really fall under any of these regulations. And that's why they're making so much money with the surgery and everything, because it, it, it's, mm -hmm. it, the cost of doing it isn't regulated under Obamacare because the mm -hmm. Democrats haven't done anything to regulate mm -hmm. it, it. Yeah, it's, this is one of those dirty little secrets that no one wants to have a conversation about. Amen to that. Yep. Well, it's a bad situation, Shane. No, no question about it. But uh, let's see what else we got over here. Uh, we did the Trump uh, thing. Trump failed the pande pandemic response. Uh, he kept on playing it, saying it was going to go away. It did not. He lied. Well, never said that. No, I know. There's. Let's 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 look at history, okay? We had the bird flu. We had the swine flu. We had Ebola. We had, uh, I don't know, name HIV. your... HIV. Uh, yeah, name your uh, a HIV, uh, what was it, uh, N, N something, whatever that, whatever that thing was. None of these things have ever panned out. They've always been the scare tactics of people were saying, oh, the bird flu's coming, the swine flu's coming, all this stuff is coming. And nothing ever happened with any of it. So why were we to think that COVID would be any different? Why would we treat it any differently than we treated any of these other things that never materialized into anything? Because it was a cover-up from the beginning, and Fauci lied from the beginning, and he had to he had to carry this mm -hmm. sword, uh, you know, to defend everyone. And so the the first course of events was to shut everyone down. Yeah. And, and the difficult problem was is that because he lied, it, it prevented people from really understanding how and what was the best way of preventing it. Now, in, in the early throes of this, if you remember back in February of 2020, when I called Fauci phony and, you know, and a failure, fake, fake and phony, I called him that in February 2020, I said so because the doctors at the Vancouver General Hospital, VGAs, in Vancouver discovered that when you brought people in with issues of COVID that were ele with elevated issues like um, diabetes mm -hmm. or issues with regard to lung disease or other heart disease, what, what they discovered was providing these people with a higher level of direct oxygen within mm -hmm. the first eight hours dropped any risk in, in of, of uh, exposure for these people and things like that. And there's, I, I'm mentioning that simple one because that came out of Canada. They ignored, mm -hmm. but there's so many other examples of different medications that are going to be used. He had to lie about all of it to cover up what he had done, which was created. Mm -hmm. and, and instead of come out and say, well, we created it. It was, it came from China. We're responsible. we got to work together to solve this. These things will work. These things might not. No, they had to slam everybody to cover up and the, well what's that called mm -hmm. that, you know that, that 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 that's called a conspiracy and that's what it was it was a good and trump didn't know about it because they lied to him yeah uh trump's failed wall mexico and mexico never paid for it um well they're paying for it now <laughs> he only built 50 miles of new wall well and he repaired hundreds of miles of the wall that was damaged or replace trash so or whatever. Again, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's semantics. 
And right now, the wall is laying there on the ground, paid for, uh, and uh, Biden shut it down. In Texas. Yeah. Like, like all the repair and replacement was done on the California border. Because mm -hmm. they started in the ocean. Yeah. Um, you know, mm -hmm. the, original, the original fence or whatever you want went mm -hmm. 10 feet out into the into the water in the ocean. Uh, his his wall went, uh, I think, 50 mm -hmm. feet out into the ocean. So uh, anyway, the, the point of, of it is, is California got covered, and then they were halfway through Texas, or almost two-thirds, and they bought it all to complete it, the, the sections, and, and they shut it down, yeah. you know. And they, mm -hmm. uh, if you remember a year ago, the Biden administration said, oh, well, they, they were going to complete you know the parts not done with mm -hmm. the parts that are, have been paid for, but they they never did. They never Another did. Another yeah. lie, yeah. lie, 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 lie. And you know now what do we have? Uh, the uh, homeless in all of our large cities where these immigrants are going uh, are putting a drain on this on the uh, you know the coppers of those places. And uh, boy, I don't know. From our text line, 478-8298, you claim conservatives like you care about issues, yet you start your program today uh, saying the Supreme Court stuck it to Joe Biden. So your party is really about sticking it to the lives, not issues. No, the three things that the court uh, uh, did uh, took away uh, the Biden constraints and gave freedom back to the people is what it did. Well, I, I made my observation based mm -hmm. on the, the, the policy your president has followed and the fact that they knew from the very beginning this wasn't going to work. And they mm -hmm. pushed it all the way to the Supreme Court knowing that it wasn't mm -hmm. that, that this was going to be the outcome. So the, the best question of the week, practically the only one, was when he made a speech against, uh, you know, uh, uh, students, uh, student loans mm -hmm. uh, and, and a, 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 a a journalist. Action. I believe it was a journalist. Yeah. You know, said to him in a clear voice, didn't yell. Uh, so why why did you make these promises and and mm -hmm. and of hope and and there there was none. And and then he of course he lodged. Well, it's the republic. No, he, it was a great question because the, mm -hmm. the the real answer to it was for political means to win the 2022 election. Now, yeah. but of course 24, you know 24 it, election. Yeah. And then he walked away. Yeah. <laughs> Like well, he did all yeah. the interview. He said, "Did you, said, did did you give?" He said, on? "Did you give false hope?" Was what the journalist asked. Yeah, yeah. but did you see him on that in NSNBC interview? Yeah, where, where before it was over, <laughs> got up and, and just laughed. Yeah, and, they, <laughs> and they, yeah. No, normally, the protocol is the guest waits till they go to commercial and then leave. Yeah. No, right. He, I'm he out of here. Start, yeah, I'm gone. He gets up and scuttles <laughs> off. Like I. <laughs> I would say usually you go off stage right, but he, he went off stage left. So right, yeah, right, <laughs> right behind, behind the, her. The, yeah, yeah, right behind the journalist. I don't know where yeah. I'm going. So anyway, yeah, he never yeah. does. <laughs> Let's see from our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight. Forget about the wall. Too late. I feel like I'm already in South America, living right here in Bozeman. Yeah. Great comment, and it's true. Uh, you know, the whole Fed's uh, it, it effort to reduce inflation is get inflation to go back, you know, go to 10, I, excuse me, get unemployment to go to 10%. Well, it's not going to happen. You have yeah. 7 million plus people illegally in the last three yeah. years that have come into your country. So, you know, the, the unemployment rate will stay, if not go lower in, yeah. in, your, in your country. It, 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 yeah, there's too many people looking for jobs. And too many people that shouldn't be there looking for jobs, <laughs> taking I would, jobs that no one else will take. It's yeah, I would that, go yeah. along with that. So yeah, we're yeah. in, we're in real trouble. So uh, yeah, geez, that's I don't right. know. So all right, uh, what else we got going on here? We got a lot to talk about here, Shane. We got to move on. Uh, the electric vehicle industry, uh, Trump is uh, taking taking that to task. Uh, he railed against the electric vehicle industry during a speech in uh, Michigan, uh, or to Michigan Republicans, I should say, uh, warning them that the state's auto industry is at risk under uh, President Biden. So, I'm so glad you brought this up. This is great. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Joby, jo, Joby Aviation, of course, my favorite's Blade. Uh, Joby Aviation made a huge announcement this last week. They will be delivering 
Are you ready, Thomas? I'm ready. Flying taxi helicopters <laughs> next year. No way. Commercial... Joby, J-O-B-Y, aviation. This is a, an amazing story. We we start talk. I started talking about it four years ago, and Tom always sits yeah. back and swirls in his seat when I bring it up. I do, but, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm dropping so, things all over the studio here. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, you, you should be. So I, the great thing about it is now we're going to have guess what? You know, instead of uh, electric vehicles, we're going to have electric electric flying taxis initially, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. th this is a great deal because it's going to change the world and create a 1.5 trillion dollar industry by 2050. So anyway, it, it's trading at ten dollars. It went from eight mm -hmm. to fifteen on this announcement. And meanwhile, my favorite is Blade. And Blade's, uh, you know, Tom. He always jumps at me when I bring it up because, yeah. you know, last time I brought it up last month, the stock was was uh, down around two and a quarter. It's three three ninety four now because they mm -hmm. already have a contract with JFK to deliver. Um, Ultra light, electrified, ultra light, electric flying uh, uh, car, again, uh, choppers fly from JFK to downtown New York. And the police department in New York is going to replace all the helicopters they have with uh, electric flying vehicles. So this is all, it's all coming, folks. We, we got, we found the answer to what's going to save uh, your country and probably the world create a multi-trillion dollar industry and probably a couple hundred million jobs. This is good. And where do we plug these in? Well, that's going to be the big problem, isn't it? Yeah, it's a major problem. It's one hell of a problem. Well, no, but you've got a bigger problem with cars. I mean, No, we don't. You, know, you, there's, there's no, you don't no. need to plug your car in. You just fill it with gas and go. Talking about electric vehicles, quit changing the technology. Yeah. You, you, Okay, yeah, I last week I went to the downtown downtown hotel here for a investment meeting, and I'm looking at this hotel. It's really swanky. It's 101 uh, North Tracy. If you haven't been there, it's the ACA whatever it is. I forget what it's called, but anyway, it's uh it's it's about a 10 story building. Uh, I'm I'm trying to picture all the people if that if that thing is even 30 percent full. Where in the hell are they going to? Where are they going to park their cars? Uh, there's a parking garage right across the street, so they got plenty of parking. But where are they going to charge them? Unless that parking garage has a has an electric uh, thing at every parking space, which I don't think they will. And the vandals will come in and cut the things off, and you know, I mean, that'd be it's a nightmare. Well, of course it is. Yeah, so, I mean your your so, your yeah. grid your electric grid right now is at 110 percent. Well, it is, yeah. Um, yeah, so. you, you, there is not enough electricity for electric vehicles, so. Well, there isn't, yeah. yeah. So I don't know why we're investing in electric vehicles at all, but that's. Well, I that's been my argument all along, Tom. Okay, uh, well, good. So electric flying uh, things are out, cars are out. <laughs> Anything's not gas powered is out. Well, no, I, yeah, they'll have generators at airports, like uh, for them. Yeah, maybe the police department will have generators. Well, and, yeah, those those are exceptions. So, anyway, all right, we got to take a short break. It's uh, we still got a full hour to go, so stay tuned. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Tom and Shane right after the news. Seven minutes after the hour of 10 a.m. Mountain Time, it's Saturday, it's July 1st, 2023, uh, one half of the year gone. Tommy Gallup, your morning mayor in the house. Shaman Tobin, half man, half amazing, on the line with me. And, uh, well, Shane, General Motors and the parent company of China's BYD Auto Limited went straight to the source, and they're buying stakes in lithium mines uh, because they're afraid they're going to run out of lithium if they don't have some kind of control over this stuff. Well, it's the, the irony of this is Tesla must plan for this 10 years ago. He already amassed his own lithium and had uh, three, three of the largest battery uh, manufacturing facilities in the world. So they're really trying to catch up to Tesla. Um, and uh, thank Frank Joostra, you can thank him again. He's the one who sold the Russians your um, uranium um, 
assets. And uh, he then uh, went out and purchased a bunch of uh, lithium assets in South America, in particular, sold it all to the Chinese. So a great Canadian helping Russia and China, but no one seems to care. But uh, the, the real problem that GM has is they're, they're so far behind with Tesla uh, with regards to manufacturing. And, you know, Tesla's, you just got a waiting list for his vehicles, whatever price is sold at. And basically, you know, the, the, the forward earnings of, of his company are, are here. Now, remember, this is a man that has a, a multitude of assets, in, in, including, you know, his space company. So he, he can make uh, Tesla an industrial company overnight by acquiring two or three other of his of his own privately held companies and just blow the market out. So that I I think that's where it's, SpaceX will end up being a part of Tesla. I think that sometime in the next five to ten years we'll see. But that that that's mm -hmm. what will happen. Yeah, well, it could be. Well, Ford lost well, lost their shirt on. Um electric vehicles this past yeah, the year 150 yeah they went in all in on the 150 yeah, yeah. and uh, it cost them big time and and um i i appreciate the fact these companies probably see something in the future but i mean this would be like buying a, a, a thousand head of cattle and there's no water <laughs> you, you gotta you gotta yes, right. you gotta well yeah. maybe you know i mean there's, you know, I mean, you can build all the electric cars you want, but if there's no place to plug them in, um, you know, or if the grid won't handle it and the grid's already off the charts now anyway. So unless we go to some other kind of power, uh, nuclear or whatever, uh, you know, the electric vehicle industry is dead in the water. I mean, they're just, they're just treading that's water. Right. And that's why electric, electric flying vehicles, are so important not not to, to, to be moaning this but look the, the bottom line is what's more efficient what's more mm -hmm. what's more uh, beneficial uh, we we covered this you and i did this eight years ago and mm -hmm. what we discovered is five to seven grand in the u.s for you to have a charger at home and uh, seven to ten grand in canada to have a charger at home and you know what did there's there's a billion uh, cars on the planet that are you know, operated by gasoline and yeah. so you know that's why there's this giant used car industry in your country more used cars are bought and sold in your country than new cars yeah or sure. anywhere else in the world and you're, you're better off to uh, don't buy a new car mm -hmm. particularly electric go out and buy a uh, two, three to five year old car and you know, drive it for two years uh, mm -hmm. i mean with all these companies that'll give you the price on a car and give you a price and you swap it every, you know, two years and mm -hmm. get another car that's two to three years old. And mm -hmm. the bottom line, at the end of the day, you're not, you don't have a bank payment. You don't have a, mm -hmm. a, 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 a lease payment. And it's going to cost you less as an insurance because it's a used car. And there's great used cars out there and lots of people willing to sell them <laughs> that after two or three years because they want to go buy a new one. So, or they've gone and bought an electric car. Yeah. So, so yeah, that'll carry th this next mm -hmm. generation, the X, Y, Zs, and even the back of the millennials, you know, mm -hmm. for the next 10, 20 years because of what 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 I perceive as the future. And uh, that's it. There you go, man. Another rant. You should have let me rant. <laughs> I I you know as my position is I don't agree. I think the electric cars is dead now as it was in the nineteen twenties. Um, when half the cars in New York City were electric, um, you know, it's just there. There's no way, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's no way. Yeah. Yeah, and as far there's... as the as far as the electric flying, that's not going to happen either. Those are going to have to be hybrids. They're going to. Well, have to meanwhile, be. you know, Lamborghini hit, hit its highest stock price, you know, in the history of the country mm -hmm. company, mm -hmm. and you know, they sixteen thousand cars a year they produce. And and the newest version of the Lamborghini this year, ready for this, eight million dollars, mm -hmm. and they're already all sold. So I mean, yeah, if you want to go buy a Tesla because mm -hmm. you're rich, and you, or you want to go buy some Chinese Tesla or some Chinese electric car, great. Uh, the, the the Chinese are having the same problem with cars as they are their economy. 
the Chinese aren't buying the cars made there. Well, if no. they're going to buy a car, yeah, if they're going to buy a car, they'll, they'll buy it from China or from uh, Korea. But <laughs> you can't buy an American car in China. But yeah. you can buy, you know, you can buy Japanese and Korean cars. There. Well, I just, uh, I, I would be curious how many people bought an electric car and um, have decided that uh, that that was a huge mistake, and I'm going to trade it back in for something that uh, makes sense. Well, we've never had a texter or a phone call telling us they own an electric car. I, I wish if there if there is such a person, mm -hmm. they text you or call in and tell us what they think of it. I would think so, but. I don't. Uh, I I don't know. I just don't see it uh, at all. So the yeah the. Uh, but uh, according to our texters, uh, December 9, twenty twenty one, Ford F one fifty Lightning reservation list three years along already with two, uh, two hundred thousand in the queue. Ford can't make electric trucks fast enough. Well, they may not make them fast enough, but they sure lost their shirt. Uh, yeah, that's right. They lost almost a billion dollars, or close to, or maybe more than a billion dollars. Uh, uh, I just, oh, by the way, this is a great learning thing. Uh, Apple at, at three trillion dollars, its net worth now because of the stock price, mm -hmm. blah blah blah. The amazing reality, folks, is Apple single-handedly is worth more money than all the public companies listed on the London Stock Exchange, all of them. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. that. That's just astounding. Yeah. Um, yeah, they uh, a net gain of $1.8 million after a loss of $3.1 billion in the first quarter of 2022, uh, primarily attributable to the value of its investment in the startup vehicle uh, maker uh, Ravion, Ravion. So, yeah, so they, they took a bath on electric vehicles. Well, well, this whole market from the Dow to the mm -hmm. Standard Ports 500 um, to, uh, you know, all, all, all of it, the entire market is being braced by basically 50 stocks. Yeah. yeah you know, the, mm -hmm. the, if you look at the wider market, and like I do, the Wall Street Journal has a great website for you to look at. Uh, you'll see that uh, the, their stocks are down 60 to 70, 80 percent. Yeah. So it, it's a nightmare out there. Come on. Yeah. From our text line, 478-8298, uh, Shane, Zoom, uh, hit bird, flying car crashes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all go back to bicycles. Lord knows we could all lose some weight. <laughs> yeah, we should. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to lose weight that bad. What happens when you run out of battery on the interstate? Are you going to uh, are are you going to the nearest charging station to get a gallon of electricity? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Listen, by, by the way, about biking. Look, yeah. the bottom line to biking is if you read the studies, particularly the uh, stand on bikes at you know in in gyms or wherever you work out, uh, they're great for respiratory building up your lungs, your chest, mm -hmm. the heart. And for muscle, uh, they are not really helpful in losing weight. Okay. Okay. The, the only relief, the only remedy to losing weight, eat less and move more, <laughs> and move more. But yeah. Bad health, but the biggest one, you know, is, yeah, and yeah. fast. I mean, if you want to lose weight, your body can handle it. Uh, look, mm -hmm. the most important thing you 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 do every day is drink water, sufficient enough. And, uh, you, you know, if, if you if you're 100 or more pounds overweight fast, uh, you know, like every other day, I'm telling you, just fast. Don't you know, you can eat all, all the fruit and vegetables you want, drink all the water, but don't eat any protein or starch or anything, you know, every other day. And, you, you know, in six to nine months, you'll lose 100 pounds. OK, a cat, your, body will, your body will consume it. A Cat 994H burns 1,800 gallons of fuel in a 12-hour shift. This machine is required to move 500,000 pounds of earth in order to get the minerals for one, one single Tesla car battery. In whose world does that kind of math <laughs> and Green New Deal make sense? Uh, I would go along with that. It's stupid. Our world. They're doing it, baby. <laughs> well, 
Uh, well, they got child labor in Africa in uh, mining all these things for these car batteries, and but, they're they're dying as they. Yeah, I mean, it, it, but you can you can look at the gold uh, gold industry and uh, you know uh, uh, cyanide leap, heap leaching mm-hmm. in the point zero six. If you can get point zero six ounce of gold, point zero six, not an ounce. Point zero six a ton with heap leaching, you can make money. So it, it's the same thing. The, mm-hmm. Billions of tons of earth are being moved mm-hmm. in places like Nevada and elsewhere in the world and laid in big vast ponds and sprayed with cyanide to dissolve the gold and then recover it with charcoal filters. Mm-hmm. And at point zero six, like like yeah. le, point five is half an ounce. This this is like like even um, point zero six mm-hmm. is great. But the new Green Deal people aren't gonna like you mining uh, all over the world, Shane. I mean, come on, they're gonna like that. Well, they, they, it's a theory. The theory has no scientific fact. The, the fact is is that all the claims they've made since 2000 none have come true and they won't because it's it's made up science and it it, 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 it was a it was a it was something created by obama and the vice president under clinton to create a market in chicago for you know uh, credits to be traded by you know between countries that create CO2, carbon emissions, and yeah. those that don't. Carbon credits. Yeah, yeah, the carbon credits. Al Gore. It never happened. Al Gore's it's idea. All, yeah. It's all a farce, but they got to carry on because they, mm-hmm. they make money and they scare people. Yeah. yeah, good. Millions of illegals pouring into the country. Inflation at 40-year high. Interest rates <laughs> now higher than for many years, making home and auto purchases prohibitive. Violent crime skyrocketing. War on petroleum industry. Let's go, Brandon. And what a great place to live, right? Amen. I, it, it is mm-hmm. remarkable. We live in these first world countries, mm-hmm. both of us. Mm-hmm. We've done all this on our own in 100 years. The rest of the world's yeah. been around for tens of thousands and mm-hmm. can't even come close to us. And the difficult issues that we talk about that we're trying to deal with, and, and we're still number one and two. I mean, it's pretty mm-hmm. remarkable that we have that benefit. So thank you, everybody out there that uh, yep. basically, you know, ha- helps maintain, you know, where we're, we're at in, in the world. And, mm-hmm. and hopefully things will get better, right? Yeah. Uh, water's amazing. If you feel hungry, drink some water. Your hunger pains will subside for a while. Lithium mines are open pit. Go to Butte and Berkeley Pit. And see what an open pit does to your green earth. And I would agree with that wholeheartedly. Last hour news, gas went down a dollar. Well, not here. It went up a nickel. (laughs) 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 Uh, They want us all carless. Uh, That's Gay's point of view. They want us carless, uh, Shane. That's, That's what it is. So, Well, no, wait. What No, what do you think she means by that? I'm... Is that uh, like yeah. a, a joke or like yeah. um, we, no? But er, everybody needs some way of moving around. That that's all basis of our economy, right? Well, you'd certainly think so, but uh, anyway, how uh, how are people going to get to the dollar store? Well, yeah, that's that's the whole point. Yeah, uh, why do you promote Trump all the time every week and never talk about others like DeSantis, who is Trump without the crazy? Well, the reason I talk about Trump is because none of the other uh, candidates running on the ticket with Trump uh, have a track record of as president of success. So success in a state is a lot different than success in the nation. So, The common sense of the eagle man. What a brilliant guy. I he tell you. Uh, and he lives in Bozeman, Montana. Best kept an, an secret Amer- in America. American treasure. An American treasure that doesn't have to be unearthed. It's right there. It's right there. You don't even have to drill for it. That's right. Uh, Is it possible to reconfigure electric cars for gas? (laughs) Why not? I guess. Well, no. (laughs) 
Well, sure there is. You, you put a combustion engine in it and a gas well, tank. <laughs> well, please give me a break. Well, that's Let's... reconfiguring it, isn't it? Okay, okay, okay. I'm not gonna. I, I don't want to get into this conversation. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> no, you just put a gas. You put a gas tank on the back, and you know you sell it the... and buy one with a combustion engine. That's what you do. Uh, let's see. By the end of the Roman Empire, the denarii, I guess denarii, yeah, was 5% silver. Degrading the dollar is bad news. The Fed needs to shut off the money printing machine, in my humble opinion. And I would agree with that. I think, uh, you know, printing, uh, well, let me put it this way. The, the money machine is not going to be shut down anytime soon because we are going into an election year and uh, money buys votes. Well, a stronger economy really buys votes, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah. After the last election, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I told you this two years ago. I'm done trying to figure out the American <laughs> voting public. It's, it's, it's too complicated for yeah. me. Well, three more uh, Supreme Court decisions just went on the 2024 ballot chain. <laughs> so, yeah. Along with transgender and uh, abortion. So. There we are. And as we've said before, and I'll say again, that's because those two minorities have expendable income and they will get out and vote. And that's why they're important to mm -hmm. the Democrats. That they will. All right. Let's see where are we at here. We've got about uh, yeah, got half an hour. A couple minutes left here before the bottom of the hour. I'm talking about. Well, yeah, yeah. Like half an hour. Yeah. I, uh, get a, I, get a, I get a bad review for half an hour. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> oh well uh what we need to talk about in the in the next uh segment our last segment of the morning i guess i should say um it's hard for the De republicans to figure out who to impeach <laughs> and and with the democrats yeah. with the democrat senate it, it seems to me like it's a waste of time because i don't think the senate uh is gonna is gonna vote to impeach any democrat you know, man, you're brilliant because, you know, I just had an epiphany. Yep. You know, we, we've talked this week in our podcast about a bench for for a political bench to replace Biden. Oh, yeah. And, but, but, you know, th this is like the Democrats don't have a political bench for people to run for president or vice president. But they have a political bench of people to be impeached. Yeah, so, I know. <laughs> but, like, it's, a, it's a big bench. Oh, and I just want to tell you, yeah. folks, it's all... Foam covered in leather, okay? Yeah, that's for sure. Well, uh, yeah, if if Biden if Biden does a run, they don't want to be anywhere near Camilla with her approval ratings uh, being the lowest ever of a vice president. That's the only way you get rid of both of them. Yeah, yeah, you got to kick them both out. Newsom yeah. would be the obvious, I think. Uh, New Newsom would be the DeSantis of, uh, you know, yeah. of the, of the yeah, uh, Democrat Party. And uh, uh, Gret, uh, Gretchen Whitmer of uh, Michigan, they've talked about her. They need Michigan. They need to win Michigan. Whether or not she can deliver it or not, who knows. But uh, she would be a possibility maybe uh, running Newsom and Whitmer uh, as president and vice president. you got a woman in there. Yeah, yeah, and, I, I think you know, that's a good whatever. ticket. Yeah, I, I yeah that. That, that might be something the uh, Democrats could tolerate. Um you know they're they're not going to run anybody from New York. Um, or well, who do they have? Uh, well, they, oh, they have Hillary. Did well, you go got, back to yeah. Hillary. Well, no, uh, I was talking about uh, Adams, New York mayor, uh, uh, what uh, the ex governor. Uh, you know, eh. <laughs> no, I'm going to say no. There's not much, not right. much there. I, I can't think of too many Democrat governors even that. Um, you know, are, are nationally known. Well, trying to pick a Democrat that'll run for president when Obama steps out yeah. is, is, is like a gong show. I mean, it, yeah. it really, we'll have to, we'll have to have a special Saturday segment about it. The gong show. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I gong show for president. Yeah. I, I don't see, uh, yeah, I don't see anybody going there. Uh, uh, Biden keeps insisting He's going to run. Uh, the DNC will be the ones that put the ballots, uh, put them on the ballot in the states, not not Biden. Well, yeah, and, and the reason Biden's insisting right now he's going to run is very simple. They have no bench, like I said. So well, if yeah. he says now he's not going to run, 
then 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 the focus has to go on well who's it going to be yeah so it's one of these things that's political and it's policy driven driven and Mm -hmm. that's a very sad thing for a national party like you know the demolition party to do but that's the way they are yeah well uh House House Speaker uh, Kevin McCarthy this week held his held through his support behind a possible impeachment inquiry into uh, Merrick. Uh, thank God he's not on the Supreme Court Garland. Uh, <laughs> just days after the GOP conference uh, sparred initially over a resolution from uh, uh, Lauren Bobart of, of Colorado to impeach Biden, and also they want to impeach Mayorkas and um, and probably Blinken. I would say it's going to be any any of those folks uh, will uh, will do it. What so, a bench! What a bench! Yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, let's see. The head of the FBI, head yeah. of the CIA, yeah. and the head head of the NSI. Yeah, uh, your attorney general, human health resources, homeland security. I mean, it's the list is like huge. Well, don't leave out Mayor Pete. You know, I mean, the planes aren't flying and trains are derailing everywhere. So don't leave well, him out. Weather. Come on, Tom. <laughs> I know. He, that's what he said this week. It's good weather. Okay. All right. That's going to wrap it up for this segment. Still got a full half hour to go. Thank you for joining us this morning. It's Saturday, July 1st. We're looking for a high of 80 degrees today, 84 tomorrow. So get out and enjoy this weekend. So we'll be right back with more right after the news. Welcome back, everyone. 27 minutes before the top of the hour. It's Saturday, July 1st, 2023. Year's half done, Shane. Wow. Yep, the days are getting shorter now. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, we had um, uh, something. Uh, yeah, I, I got on late this morning. Just wonder what your thoughts are on the open pit gravel pit. Uh, that uh, going into 191, not far from uh, the other one, uh, with the traffic and the accidents uh, we have on this road anyway, much less all the problems uh, that go along with it. Uh, yeah, for those of you who uh, don't know, uh, residents are pretty they are pretty upset uh, down by Four Corners, a subdivision down there, and uh, they're uh, battling uh, against a proposed gravel mine uh, on a neighboring farmer's land. Uh, Pine Butte Trails homeowners uh, uh, are uh, looking at it. Uh, is a permit hearing that uh, Jim Story's proposed 33-acre gravel pit would ruin their property values and therefore not be allowed. Uh, it's noisy. It's dusty. It's ugly. Um, uh, you know all of the uh, all of the normal stuff. Uh, Story applied for a permit to mine 700,000 cubic yards of gravel from 33 acres uh, on his farm, which is just across Norris Road from the Cottonwood Golf Course. So uh, to put that in perspective of where that is. And a previous pet, uh, pit was permitted two years ago, and uh, that was mined out uh, this summer, I guess. So, But the uh, Pine Butte Trail homeowners uh, who live uphill to the west say they are willing to live with the mine for two summers but wouldn't tolerate the requested 25-year permit for the new uh, mine. So, yeah, I guess it's damned if you do. You don't want a prison near your house. You don't want a gravel pit near your house. You don't want a sewer plant near your house. Uh, Yeah, there's just nowhere to put any of these things, Shane. Well, I encourage anyone to go, you know, uh, Wikipedia, the uh, protocol for engineering um, a road in your country, mm-hmm. and you'll find that the base of it, it requires three to four feet of um, asphalt, uh, uh, of uh, gravel. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's because of, uh, you know, once they put the topping on it, it, it can handle the weight of 18 wheelers, yeah. uh, you know, traveling, traveling the highway. So it's just, that's what's required. Yeah. Uh, Money is weird when you uh, think about it. Uh, It's just paper. It's only paper. Uh, Your show is so joyful and everybody's always laughing and having a good time. I I wish that you were on instead of Aaron. (laughs) Well, we're working on it. We're trying our best. But, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes the hard heads of corporate America are hard to move, but uh, we would love to be back on uh, seven or five, seven days a week, <laughs> five days a week, uh, Monday through Friday. So who knows? And the, 
and and the importance of money isn't uh, paper mm -hmm. money; it's debt. Yeah, you know, debt debt is yeah. the single single most important thing to capitalism, and it's virtual. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's one it's one of these things that we keep track of. And uh, just for the thirty second reminder, mm -hmm. the Treasury auction this week. Well, you know, as it is every week, you know, they they raise anywhere from uh, fifty to one hundred and fifty billion dollars but it's really bad because all the offerings that were put out there was one two three four five um this is an example uh this is a 27 day bill 70 billion uh offered and uh you know less than a third 24 billion was purchased but so why purchase it with an interest rate of 0 0.005 when you can buy it out of the market and get three and a half percent so that's where you're at. That makes sense. Money buys votes in terms of buying power. Isn't the dollar worth a nickel compared to uh, 1913 <laughs> buying power of a dollar? Yeah, uh, it's uh, something like that. I've, uh, I've, I have a uh, inflation checker on my computer that you know I can go back to the year and put a put an amount in. And it'll tell me what it. What it would buy today, or how much it would take to buy the same thing today that it took back then. So, on the suicide front, is Biden going to call Hillary if Robert Kennedy Jr. gets the nomination? <laughs> Maybe Biden and Hillary, that would be a combination, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, and Biden's gone. Uh, seems to me like meritless, uh, thank God he's not on the Supreme Court Garland, needs to be impeached. Yeah, I go along with that. That guy, as I, I am, I got to give uh, uh, Mitch credit, Shane. Uh, he had no idea Trump was going to win the election, but he didn't want Merrick Garland anywhere near the Supreme Court. So not bringing him up. Sorry. Uh, and joke. Then, and These posts are a joke. <laughs> but but the, you know the Democrats elected a woman that can't define what a woman is. I mean, yeah. how bizarre is that? Yeah. Uh, where did property rights come into the gravel pit permit? Yeah, I don't know. I guess you got to go to the public meetings and talk about that. So. Yeah. Uh, what if I told you electric cars can go 400 miles on a charge, even in winter, or recharge in 30 minutes? So what? <laughs> Not gonna buy one. Still have to have the electricity to charge. Still got to have the electricity and the place to charge it. So, and in Montana, if you're going 400 miles, uh, you better have a charger somewhere. Yeah, that's right. you better you better start looking for a charger at 200 miles, even in the winter. Uh, before your bumper music starts at the end of the show, I have to disagree with Shane. I choose uh, not to live to work. I choose to work to live. <laughs> there you go. Well, if you work to live, you work for the man. Yeah. If you, you know, if you live to work, it's because it's something you love and enjoy and you get up every day yeah. excited to do it. Uh, you work to live. Uh, it's great and you can make a, a good living, but you're working for someone else. And, and uh, that's, that, that's where you're at in life. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. I, I think it's just a preferable one to enjoy what you're doing. That's why I say live to work. That's all. Yeah. Uh, when driving, uh, when self-driving technology is perfected, there will not be a need for individuals to own vehicles. Uh, you request a vehicle, and it takes you where you want to go. This would be a great benefit to elderly and disabled folks, and that's from our good listener, Tom. We appreciate that very much, and it would be right, yeah. If self-driving things come around, uh, yeah, uh, you get on your smart smartphone, call a car, go where you need yep. to go. That means Uber and Lyft are gone as public. Yeah, companies. no. Uh, my real estate taxes just got jacked 50%. Yay, Gallatin bandits. Yep. <laughs> That's the common complaint we get every, uh, every time. Charging stations all over Montana. Grid is being improved with Biden's infrastructure. Really? Yay. Well, yeah. you know, it's like Wi-Fi. Yeah. We talked about this five years ago. Yeah, um, it, it came upon the scene. Uh, Biden, in his first uh, mm -hmm. uh, effort uh, to provide uh, uh, money for Wi-Fi, promised six hundred thousand um, mm -hmm. Wi-Fi uh, yeah. uh, 
you know, stations on poles across your country. They, they, they got the money, but haven't spent a dime doing it. So yeah. he did the same thing with, uh, you know, uh, uh, re recharging uh, stations for e electric vehicles. You know, they raised the money or got Congress authorized the money, but they haven't spent a dime building any. So th there's your great government at work. All right. Time for a fact check. 406-522-TALK is the number. Caller, you're on with Tom and Shane. What's up? Good morning, boys. Red on John here. <laughs> All right. Our honest fact checker. Well, welcome, right on fact checker. You know it. <laughs> well, I um, hope you enjoy your uh, night up there. Today. I've always had fun up there on uh, mm -hmm. uh, on July 1st, every time there. Um and so I'm out here at Canyon Ferry right now in the middle of the woods in my motorhome. And, um, and I, well, Tom, you, you took my wind away there, or one of my sails away this mm -hmm. morning when you mentioned that it was probably the, the train that cut the, uh, the, yeah. cut the mm -hmm. Internet and, and stuff like that. I was going to say that. Yeah. And then Nancy, <laughs> Nancy chopped on my bed. I was, you said you wanted a joke. And uh, I was going to put in a woke joke or whatever is that uh, in Missoula with with uh, them calling people on in and they, uh, what are they trying to do? Take away our, our constitution and the way our country's uh, been running on up. I noticed also that um, I heard on the news that all national forest lands you're not allowed to run fireworks. Yeah. And it's just like, what, 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 what is it? Uh, a liability thing or what? It's just like this. Um, we've been doing fireworks and so is China and everything for uh, <laughs> I, I, older than me. And uh, now they want to just uh, lock us all down in cages and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that and, and not take uh, mm -hmm. responsibility for it. Well, this, this comes up every year, you know, every, every 4th of July, we hear this fireworks argument uh, and, you know, in New York, they don't want it, to, or New York or California, one of the two, they don't want it going into the water, you know, because, I mean, that's, that's uh, kill the whales, I'm sure. Yeah, oh, and, yeah. And, and, and like for the past few years, for the past few years, we've had really dry uh, temperatures and everything, dry mm -hmm. forests, dry grasses. Mm -hmm. I, I can see that, but them just totally cutting mm -hmm. this all off in certain areas and stuff like this where it's really actually pretty safe, you know. Mm -hmm. As to uh, let's cross that farmer's field with all that dry grass. You know? yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> well, if you happen to take in the King's coronation celebration, they had the you know uh, the fireworks they put off were phenomenal. The mm -hmm. stuff that they had in oh. the light show, it mm -hmm. was incredible. The stuff that mm -hmm. they didn't—it's an incredible technology, and it, you know it's been around for five thousand years. So I, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't. All right. That's but for sure. And then uh, finally, um, I, I, I keep telling this like a broken record or whatever. We do have the technology. I have the technology or whatever that you don't need batteries. We've got other technologies. Mm -hmm. And so that's coming around the corner. And these, it doesn't surprise me that uh, what, uh, what was a company um, that um, is good, that lost all that money building electric, was it Ford? Or, well, Ford um, lost. You mentioned yeah, Ford lost. Uh, Three billion, I think, or close to three billion. Yeah, well, yeah. they're being stupid. All yeah. they have to, all they have to do is make a hybrid, and mm -hmm. and just go the, go that route, yeah. and mm -hmm. instead of making these solid electrical vehicles, and, and which yeah. would never last here in Montana. But uh, once I get my uh, yeah. let's get my mm -hmm. camp set on up, I'm gonna see about uh, working on some inventions to have some fun, do some fishing, and mm -hmm. uh, enjoy the Fourth of July. So I hope you, both of you enjoy. Um, Amen. All right. Thanks, John. Well, thank you. Take care. Caller, you're on with Tom and Shane. What's up? Hey, guys. Well, yep, my taxes went up, too, and I'm going to protest this time. <laughs> I didn't last time, but it's yeah. gone up $2,200, like, in the last four years. So wow. It's like you, I haven't even made an improvement, right? Yeah. Anyway, uh, I have a new bugaboo, and that would be what they're doing on our interstate between Belgrade and past Manhattan. I don't know if they're going to continue this through in toward Bozeman, but they're putting up this low, low cabling so that you cannot cross the median. And I saw it in Billings a couple mm -hmm. a week or so ago, and, and they don't get a lot of snow in this particular area where I saw it in Billings, but we get a lot of snow. So my sure. question is this, how many accidents do we actually have with people crossing the median? That I really don't know. 
But what I do know is that in the wintertime, a lot of people go into that median. They do. And I yeah. just want, yeah. And I want to know how badly is this going to tear up somebody's cars? Is it going to slingshot them back onto the interstate? What is it going to do? And last summer, we had a, a cattle truck overturn outside between me, my, Manhattan and Logan. And that guy had no choice. He said I could have either, because a guy brake, hit a, a car brake checked mm-hmm. three cattle trucks. Yeah. The third truck he brake checked said, I'm either going to run this guy over because I have no choice or I got to go into that median where he yeah. did overturn. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I do not understand why we are spending money to do this. I I mean, I just am waiting to see what's going to happen in the first lawsuit when yeah. someone's undercarriage is ripped apart and something really bad happens because yeah. I don't understand it. Yeah, there are, yeah. There, are, there are hopeless people in Bozeman who need a new camper. You know, I mean, <laughs> you spend that money, and you spend that money, money on that. On the, well, and you know, the thing is, I mean, we see what happens with campers when they go oh, into yeah. the media and they flip over. You, know, you, get, oh, you sure. could like have a, a yeah. you know, the car, you could have um, a clothes sale out on things that are spread and done it's, immediately. It's, a, media, it's a median yard sale. It's a median yard sale, exactly. <laughs> but, in, you know, in all seriousness, I, I do not understand. I don't understand why my taxes went up yet again because, I, like I said, I haven't made any improvements. But what I do understand is if you build even a chicken house on your property, yeah. your taxes are going up. Yep. So uh, one of our senators, mm-hmm. he's got a, got a place here, and he's starting to put up some outbuildings. Mm-hmm. And I'm waiting to see what he says when his taxes go up. And he's a good senator. I, I'm just like this senator. Yeah. But um, I, I want somebody mm-hmm. to speak up against this because this is outrageous. Yeah. No wonder yeah. when we get older, close to retirement, which I told my husband, mm-hmm. you can't retire because yeah. between we, we farm. And between our property taxes and our insurance on our equipment, we are mm-hmm. so far up there. We've got, yeah, yeah, yeah it's ridiculous. And mm-hmm. it's not going to, it will not stop unless we say we're not paying this crap because, yeah. you know, well, yeah, I mean, uh, I was going to say the good news is between August 15th and uh, October 1st, you can apply for a tax rebate, property tax rebate um, through the uh, through the uh, through the state. Well, I want to apply for one every year then, Tom. Well, yeah, Not just one. <laughs> well, they've got I, I mean, a, they, have, they had a surplus, so they're giving it back. I know. And I appreciate Greg Jean Forte yeah. doing that. I mean, I mean, yeah. I appreciate mm-hmm. that very, oh, yeah. very much. But in the mm-hmm. meantime. In two years or in one year, my taxes are still going to be fifty five hundred dollars on a piece of property that used to cost me twenty seven hundred dollars. Yeah, no, I, I, I feel your pain. I know we're all in the same boat. Anybody that owns property I, is facing what you're facing. I know, and the people with their campers parked on the street, mm-hmm. what are they paying for? Yeah. What well, are they paying yeah. for? Uh, I, and, again, and, you know, I mean, again, Gallon County, Gallon City, whatever, to me, they're all mm-hmm. the same because now they're all just this big liberal morass. Yeah. But, Mike, you know, what are they paying for? We don't have a sales tax, so they go in and they buy stuff. They're not paying a sales tax. What are they paying yeah. for? I want to know. Yeah. Are we paying for them? Anyway, that's my big right. bugaboo. But, but right. the thing going down the center aisle, the yeah. center median, and our, I, I'm waiting to see what's going to happen this winter when the drivers start going off the road. All right. Hey, thanks for the call. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. Uh, let's see. From our text line, uh, 478-8298. Did I miss Nancy in Roundup today? Nancy was our first call of the morning, and you can hear Nancy uh, on our replay at KMMSAM.com. Just click on Tom and Change Replay. That will The replay of today's show will be up about 1130. Uh, I do it right after the show, so uh, we'll get it up as quickly as possible. The forest is the last place for the wildlife. Keep your forest fireworks in the city. Yeah, we don't want fireworks in the in the in the, in the forest. Uh, you can sue the highway department. You can't sue the state department. Uh, so let's see. Uh, yeah, fireworks are fireworks in the forest are dangerous. Uh, good thing you guys are not in charge, or we still be in the horse and buggy. No, uh, we'd be in elect- we'd be in uh, internal combustion vehicles like we are now. We would just stay there because that's that's the most economical way to get from point A to point B. So, 
Oh, let's see. Uh, oh, I, I've got to learn to pronounce uh, Kamala. It's not Kamala. It's Kamala. So good move. Now let yeah. let's let's discuss that deep bench of uh, uh, Democrats that need to be impeached. Oh yeah. I I, I got to hear what you say on that yeah. before we run out of time. Well, to, well, I think we talked about it. Newsom be the obvious choice for the, for the Democrats. They're not going no, no, to not to run for president. The, the 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 number of Democrats that are in office right now in your government that should be impeached. Oh well, yeah, Mayorkas for sure, uh, Garland for sure, uh, Blinken, uh, Ray, you know, he's re useless. Uh, Ray, obviously, um, and uh, oh, let's well, Pete. Uh, you know, Pete's got no business running the Department of of uh, Transportation at all. So those would be my those would be my top choices, I guess. Good choices there, yeah. buddy. Higher interest rates by default shut down the money machine. Yep, that's what you're not going to shut it down during an election year. I'm sorry, ain't going to happen. Oh, let's see. Uh, Okay, yeah. Everything else is too long to read, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> or it doesn't make sense. Or it doesn't make sense. Yeah, we don't have time for it. <laughs> maybe I should maybe I should post the uh the uh, text in the replay. <laughs> yeah, you should. Yeah, that would be good. Oh, uh, I don't know. So anyway, um let's see. Uh yeah. All right. Well, we're uh, we got a, any final thoughts on what we talked about today, Shane? Because we're up against the clock here at the top of the hour. Yeah, we only have about three minutes. But what, <laughs> what, why did you put Crap Beverage Modernization Act on the list? Uh, let me see. Where is that? Uh, uh, down down towards the bottom. Craft Beverage Modernization Act, the CBMA. Another anagram. Hmm. I must have taken it off of mine, I guess. Well, I'm reading it from the one you sent me. Yeah, I know, but I think I took it off my list. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead and tell them what's in it. I have no idea. I didn't it. look it up. It's your. It would, I, oh, I there it is. Didn't... Never mind. Well, it's tax reform. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but is this federal or state? Uh, this is uh, this is uh, the president. Oh, I see. The president of the United States but... signed the Taxpayer Certainty and Disaster Tax Act. <laughs> which made permanent the most uh, provisions in the tax cuts and job cut uh, while changing some provisions. But uh, he reduced the tax rates on beer and distilled spirits and certain tax credits for wine. That's why I brought it up, that your beer, your Bud Light should cost less. Uh, and your uh, distilled spirits <laughs> and uh, your wine, so. So your MD twenty twenty will be less, uh, your Bud Light will be less, and your Jim Bean or Jack Daniels or whatever you use yeah, might well, be less. The two biggest, the two biggest revenue generators for state and federal governments are taxes on tobacco and uh, then on uh, liquor and then third on gas. So well, it made the Kennedys yeah. rich. <laughs> so there you go, Biden right. economics, baby. Yeah. Uh, adjusted alcohol content for certain still wine taxes uh, from 14% uh, percent to 16% by volume. And that's that's the only reason that I brought it up. Uh, and we in Montana have a, a fairly low tax rate on our beer. Uh, I'll pull it up here uh, real quickly and um, we'll point out what that is. Uh, yeah, we've, we've got a, we got 14 cents uh, is your tax on uh can of beer, I guess, or a bottle of beer. So that's what you're paying for your beer. Yeah, yeah. So, so taxes and of course the, yeah. the recycle bill. Yeah. Well, speaking of Bud Light, uh, Dylan Mulvaney, she's upset. Uh, he, she, it is upset. I guess I should say, uh, Bud Light not standing by me. Worse than not hiring a transgender at all. Oh my God, she is so upset that she's been getting all these. Uh, uh, threats and everything else, and uh, uh, her 10 million followers on uh, TikTok are all up in arms. Uh, 
For a company to hire a trans person and then not publicly stand by them is worse, in my opinion, than not hiring a trans person at all because it gives customers permission to be as transphobic and hateful as they want. Bingo. There you go. That's how you keep it in the, in the public square mm-hmm. and try to make it a major uh, campaign uh, policy in the next election uh, to, to generate... Uh, you know, uh, uh, gay community uh, donations and votes. That that's all it is. Let's keep. We got we got to have something to talk about. Well, we'll keep that keep that in uh, in mind. As I said, uh, abortion is going to be on the ballot, whether it's physically there or not. So will transgenderism. So will affirmative action, and of course, uh, so will uh, the the uh, gay websites and all the other stuff. So. Yeah. That's all going to be on the ballot, folks. So that's right. I think the Republicans have a tough road to hoe in twenty twenty four. So, all right, that's going to wrap it up. Say goodbye, Shane. I will indeed. Thank you, everyone. Great phone calls today, and my best friend uh, Tom and I will see you on our podcast on Tuesdays and Thursdays at five Mountain Time. And uh, we really enjoyed the show today. We covered a lot of topics. Mm-hmm. I thank you for this, Tom. I really, really appreciate the opportunity. Be happy, be safe, everyone. Live in the moment because that's all you have moments every day. And live to work because you want to wake up in the morning and be happy where you go to work. Come home with a smile on your face, everyone. We will talk to you all again next weekend. <laughs>